Uh, Cheslov, I'm yeah. sorry to bother you, but the audio is too loud in the sense that it is uh, really. Uh, uh, can you have uh, somebody look at the computer to reduce the volume of what we had said earlier uh, on the microphone that you have? Um, Absolutely. Everybody is enjoying it, but they cannot understand the note from one to the other. If you can kindly do that, we'll be very grateful. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, what is normal audio? Oh, we had initially uh, increased it, no, when we were not able to hear anything. I think after uh, the audio was set, it was not brought down. Yes. It's, uh, it's pretty low. Uh, how does it sound now? It is sounding okay. Can you play something loud? Just, just a, lo a strong uh, one movement on the... Uh, on the um, of course. The hardest one, yeah, then I'll see. Uh, yes, it's better, it's better now. Uh, can it go maybe two, three decibels lower? Of course. Well, that's all right. I think this will this will be okay. Yeah, let's have a look. Yes, it's good now. So it's good now. You can look into the other camera to me. Uh, sure. Yes. So my apologies, but uh, again, I think it's uh, sometimes it's fun to have uh, uh, our audience into the sound check. <laughs> Although this was not supposed to be the sound check, but we were in the midst well, of the technical, uh, you know, uh, arrangements. So I, uh, can I make a very humble request? Can you begin again? Uh, would it be too much to ask? Or can you play again? Because we missed a lot of what you were doing. Uh, it was all lost. You know, it was like one rumor, as you say, one noise, but not the music. We could not hear the subtlety. If you don't mind, can we begin again? Absolutely. This is something I can do all day, so... Yes. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Are you done? <laughs> so that was the second time. Still a little bit of a work in progress, but uh, really amazing music. Thank you for letting me play it twice. <laughs> <laughs> It was fantastic. I'm, I, you know, we were, we were, we've been trying. I, I, I don't have to be sorry. You don't have to be sorry. We're trying to, you know, the more it's, it's complex, you know, to set things up, especially the microphone um, that uh, your friends have uh, put, put there. And, and fortunately, are recording today. So in any case, we'll have a very good, um, uh, you know, uh, recording people. We can always mix them later. So, uh, welcome, uh, Chaslov, uh, uh, to the 20th Yaranad Virtual Batak series. Uh, it is my pleasure, really. Uh, of course, uh, now uh, we do go way back, but uh, it, is, it is not just, uh, uh, you know, um, it is not just about uh, um, sort of being in conversation, but I think uh, it is also, in, for me, very intimate. Uh, that we are going to be also talking about the Anad ensemble that uh, I've finally been able to put together and you're such an important part of that and the kind of work we are, uh, uh, you know, now we've already been working, uh, we've been doing, sort of achieving now for the last uh, eight years. Uh, especially this year was uh, dedicated to the 550th birth anniversary of uh, Sai Sri Guru Nanak Dev. Um, and, uh, you know, we, what I said about... Uh, um, you know, here uh, in, in Rome, um, we put together an ensemble with, with the instruments that were that correspond directly to the years of Guru Nanak's udasis, his travels. So, uh, and uh, I'm sure. Let me uh, let me give a wide angle so that everybody can have a look. Uh, remove my uh, horrible uh, figure, and uh, you know, people can see on the right side, bottom of the screen. That's the clavichord. Uh, if I may, and that's uh, correspond. That's what was uh, the keyboard existing at the time of Guru Nanak, uh, and we will, of course. Uh, but this is all later part of the conversation. So, for me, it is um, important to be able to um, converse not just about the work that you are doing, how you are, uh, you know, uh, you've been through the Conservatory of Paris, and we'll, we'll look into all of that. But it's. Uh, uh, important for me also to talk about uh, the ensemble because it's historic what uh, uh, I've uh, been doing. It'll be uh, my my sort of uh, it'll be an honor, in fact, to uh, to to speak to one of my you know uh, ensemble members. Uh, we've had uh, a wonderful time with uh, uh, you know Pepe Frana was very kind uh, because he was busy. He introduced me to this wonderful couple, uh, Michele Carreca. I hope to have him one of the days. It would be wonderful to hear him mm -hmm. play the lutes. Uh, and his wife, Carolina Pace, who's an amazing flautist. He plays a recorder in Piccolo. And we had uh, the fortune of, uh, you know, having uh, Valentina Nicolai as well, and Valerio Lo Cito, a fantastic uh, uh, player. So uh, it, was, it was quite an experience. We were all together at the time, uh, uh, you know, in, in oh, terms absolutely. of... Uh, I've been here, what, since January 16, I worked for two months, and then the event got cancelled, but we were fortunate to at least, uh, we were glad, in fact, it was a pleasure to uh, do something for the radio here, Radio Ride 3. three. Um, anyway, we'll come to that, so let me introduce you a little, uh, be ready for some backbiting. So friends, uh, uh, I welcome uh, you all as well, and my apologies, sincere apologies for the technical delay in the beginning, but we were fighting hard, uh, I mean, you know, sort of trying to catch the bull by its horns uh, since, I don't know what, one o'clock today, we've been working on it, Chester has been there since 11, but it's been quite, uh, uh, you know, quite difficult to, to get uh, uh, everything working and uh, that, that some of the uh, checks, etc., etc., even frames that I uh, do have been done basically live on, on live view. So my apologies for that uh, clumsiness, if you may, <laughs> or uh, I mean, false all mine. My apologies. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Cheslav Bala Singh. He is the uh, son of uh, artist Hardev Singh and uh, Dr. Maria Bartko Singh, uh, who is a Polish, uh, 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 you know, grand lady who is an art critic uh, and teaches. Uh, where is she? Is she still teaching Cheslav, your mom? Uh, no, no. She teach? No longer. She's retired now? That's right. What did she teach? 
Oh, she's an art historian, uh, specializing in the Baroque, particularly. And so, you know, ornamental, heavy gold, beautiful round cupids and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some things like that, okay. <laughs> And um, so, um, so you can see that uh, um, so the husband was the artist, and the wife oh. was a art, art historian. I just don't want to be in the house to listen to them talk about art. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but uh, they they had two sons. Uh, they named uh, uh, Hardev saying was a poet. He he wrote poetry in Polish, in English, in Punjabi. And um, uh, he was the first artist in residency, resident artist at the Kila Sarai in Sultanpur Lodi in 2012. He stayed there for six months and, uh, and he painted, uh, uh, you know, he, he, uh, all the 31 Raga, uh, you know, in, in, he painted 31 Raga, paint, uh, you know, sort of made these paintings. Um, and also the barge of Guru Gobind Singh. So he produced, I don't know what, an amazing pace. Uh, 30, not just 31 Raga paintings, the hawk or the barge of uh, uh, Guru Gobind Singh and several other artworks in the six months that he stayed there. So I have a very, uh, you know, a beautiful, I, I really, he, uh, we were like family in the end. And um, Hardev and Maria uh, Bhatko um, uh, Singh, they named both of their sons on the two companions of Guru Nanak Dev. Uh, so Chaslav is, uh, full name is Chaslav Bala Singh. And his brother is is Veslav Mardana Singh, so that is uh, how uh, you know they've grown up. And Cheslav, of course, has grown up with uh, some of the finest music of uh, you know Gurbani Sangeet uh, music, uh, in, which includes so many elders, including Pai Uthar Gurcharan, Pai Samun Singh, and others. Uh, uh, Pai Santa Singh, his dad, was very fond of uh, listening. I mean, it was wonderful. In fact, Cheslav, when your dad would be painting, he would be humming. Rag Tilang, because one of the Rababis who used to be from your ancestral village, uh, he learned uh, Tilang was his favorite. He would be humming Tilang, uh, singing and doing a lap here and there and painting. So that was uh, very beautiful. So, yeah, I, mean, uh, I always uh, remember him as a, as a hummer. He would uh, he'd hum nonstop and uh, <laughs> even sometimes while sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. That's how much the music was imbued, you know. I see, yeah. I see. So here is uh, your little brief which uh, uh, Professor Francesca Casio has put together. She summarized your very big uh, CV. I'm going to read out from that and uh, maybe um, summarize it in Punjabi for our friends. Um, uh, Chester Balasing is a Canadian-born pianist and composer based in Poland. Uh, he studied piano under the under renowned musicians such as uh, Dr. Sophie uh, Moshevich, right? Moshevich, uh, Regina Bodnia, uh, uh, Raymond Spawowski, uh, Spasowski, uh, Jeanette uh, Fujarczuk. Bogomil Novicki, I mean, these are, um, pardon my pronunciation, and Dr. Jerzy uh, Szyzniak. Did I say that right? As a uh, solo, he uh, Je uh, Jerzy Szyzniak. That's okay. the way it's pronounced. It's a Polish yeah, name, but yeah, that. close yeah, enough. I have to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My apologies to them, but of course, uh, I, I bet uh, when they will be um, dealing with my name, they will be messing up plenty too, so I, uh, I don't need to apologize. <laughs> I let them mess my name, which which uh, many people do. In Italy here, they say instead of Baldeep, because E is pronounced as A, like Idea. No, the idea is an is an Italian term. One of the first things that I learned when I was studying a bit of Italian, I was such a poor student. I was always researching, and Idea, so E A R, so they call me Baldeep. Double, <laughs> that's how they. And anyway, to come back. Uh, to reading, I should, I should in fact be very formal in reading CVs. I uh, stop in between and I start joking with my guests. <laughs> I tease them. No, I, I say it's like, come up with their. My, my, I always must prefer be. so. <laughs> I like, I prefer <laughs> the joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So I continue then. I, I hope I don't. You won't. You don't want me to start all over again, is it? Like I made you start uh, uh, <laughs> to, to, to replay the from the top. Ones. From the top, you know. <laughs> yes, the, the names top. again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm known to not to listen to requests, so <laughs> I'll move from where I was. 
Well, as a soloist, Chancellor has performed in prestigious venues in the USA, Canada, and Europe. He's also a studio artist and an educator. His compositional styles range from, from small ensembles to symphony orchestras. In 2015, he co-founded Our Place Foundation, a nonprofit org uh, dedicated to disseminating art in all its forms effectively and extensively to audiences, as well as encouraging cultural exchanges. Based out of Poznan, Poland, he, he has pursued a steady course of inviting artists to Poland and sending Polish artists abroad. Among its most recent um, achievements, the foundation has curated and produced, I mean, he has uh, curated and produced uh, International Audiovisual Festival, uh, which had its fourth edition in 2019. And the composition and production of an interdisciplinary show dedicated to the victims of the first Nazi concentration camp on occupied Polish territory. Hailing from a Sikh background, Chester delved his interest in Gurbani Sanghi tradition, studying with its primary exponent called Pai Baldeep Singh. I don't know who this guy is. You don't want people, <laughs> you don't want to know Pai Baldeep Singh. I mean, he's um, known to be very arrogant. He is uh, very intimidating, Chaslav, as you would know. Um, he's impossible, as uh, Dr. Madhav Gopal Singh would say. Um, so you don't want to know a certain Pai Baldeep Singh. He is known to be an elitist. He's known to be snobbish. Uh, I don't know what. Just because he doesn't uh, accept mediocrity, people call him that. Anyway, I have plenty to say in my defense. But uh, dosto, <laughs> dosto, dosto, dosto. Um, well, uh, Paolo is here. Paolo, Paolo uh, Rossetti is joining us. Oh, what a fantastic, you know. Cheslov, I think you heard this recording of you busy earlier to tuning your uh, instruments. But it was I fantastic, did. isn't it? Paolo and uh, Pepe, it was amazing, amazing artists, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was, I was just taken, I was swept away yesterday by the, by the solo, for example, right at the beginning with all of the, <laughs> and then the description of what he was doing, that was, uh, that was really something special. So if he's, uh, yeah, uh, did, did you just say that he, he's, he's listening? Yes, he's listening to you. Oh goodness! So so uh, uh, well that, now I'm, now I'm going to start to get nervous. And Paolo, I mean compliments to you. Fantastic, fantastic. And and, and I, I I mean yeah. I don't know what else to say. I was really impressed yesterday with the with the whole. But Paolo form. Paolo is supposed to be the healer, <laughs> acoustical rap. I think he's going to make you sick now that he's watching you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So it's lovely. Anyway, it's it's wonderful, and so many friends are joining. Uh, you know, so I don't, as I customarily, I don't take names, but be just because there's so many friends, and my, uh, you know, I've already, already welcomed them. My salutations to them. Uh, so my, uh, I'll just summarize your, uh, you know, brief very quickly in Punjabi. Dosto, Chester Bala Singh, Canada de Janme Hange, ina de Mataji Polish Hange, Dr. Maria Bartko Singh, jo ke art historian Hange. Or uh, in the Pitaji Sardar Hardev Singh, artist, jade, uh, Bauti, Vidwan, uh, uh, you know, Chitrakalakar, Chitrakar Rahe, Kavi Rahe, uh, O Chebi, uh, Sultan Purlodi Kila Sarai, Ake Rahe, Jethe, Ekati Rakante, on a paintings, Banayasi, Kudurti Jadome Ponchea, Tera, uh, March, uh, those are uh, at Haranu, uh, Saz made a Sari Tabaka, Tesipusne, on other paintings, Chaka Tabaka and Lagavesi, just will live a Poncha, O Bachigaya son. हले तो ही मेरे सांत्वन नहीं मिले, you know बहुत कुछ नहीं मिला इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स तबाह हुए पर आर्टिस्ट हरदेव सिंह होना दिया एकत्ती रागन ये जिधे पेंटिंग्स ने बाज गुरुगोविंद सिंह दे बाज दे उत्ते जिधिया उन्हें पेंटिंग्स की तियां सी ओ शुक्र है के बाज के यहाँ सन पर हरदेव सिंह होनी केला सराय आके रहे पहले uh, Anmol uh, Shishya San, Una de Gursik San, Una de Sa, Una de Saaf Mitita, Una de Naal Udaasiya, which be Vaisa Bhi Seva Nashi Rahe, uh, Pai Sahab Bala Ji, te, Pai Sahab Mardana Ji, O Dona de Nao Te, uh, Ina Ne Aapne Betiya Nau, Vade Da Nao, Chaslav Bala Singh, Or uh, uh, Dujhe Pra Da Nao, Vaislav uh, Mardana Singh, e, Ina De. So Chaslav, uh, uh, Poland Brinde Ne, Pause Nanwich, Jithe Maa Do Tin Martuba Ja Chukya, in a piano sikhya, Dr. Sophie Kai Janakolo, Dr. Sophie Boshevich, Regina Bodnia, Raymond Spasovsky, uh, Jeanette uh, Fujarjuk, uh, Bere Naume, uh, Punjabish Nilikewe, so my Maf Karna Bana Tumpela, Vikustaki Maf Chagia, Bogumil uh, Noviki, and Dr. Jerzy Strijinik. 
Shizhniak. Um, you, you you will correct my uh, the names later on, Chaslav. They in a as a ekal vadan the tor the vi in a ne bahot important venues the America chhi, Canada chhi, Europe chhi, vakri vakri thama the in a ne perform kita hai, studio artists vi rahe ne in a ne kahi recordings kiti ane the talim vidan the ne aur in a di jadi jadi bandishan banana di in a di jadi jadi jada range hai ga jada in a da daira hai ga. अपनी संस्था बनाई आवर प्लेस फाउंडेशन जेद राही वक्रिया वक्रिया कलाव की सेवा करते ने और लोगों तक ले जाते ने कल्चरल एक्सचेंज भी सभ्याचारक जो एक्सचेंज हैं वह भी ये करते हैं कि पूरे यूरोप पोलैंड पोजलैंड शहर है पोलैंड के उत्थे के वसनीक हैं तो इन्होंने आर्टिस्टा बुलाते भी ने पोलैंड के पोलिश आर्टिस्ट बहर भी भेजते हैं तो इन्होंने कई रीसेंट जे हाल द साल पिछले साल इन्होंने कई कुछ प्रोड्यूस किया दो हज़ार उन्नी के जोड़ा फोर्थ एडिशन से ऑडियो विजुअल फैसटिवल हूँ वो वास्ते इन्होंने काफ़ी कुछ किया तो इन्होंने इंटर डिसिपलिनरी शो एक डेडीकेट किया जड़ा नाजी जाने के जो तो पोलैंड ऑक्यूपाइड टेरिटरी सी हिटलर दे अधीन वो तो जड़ा पहला कंसंट्रेशन कैंप जड़ा सी वो दे वो दे उन्हें डेडिकेट वो वो दे उत्ते इन्हने एक वर्डी रचना भी कितनी सी प्रोडक्शन कितनी सी जड़ी बहुत ही सराही गई सी मैं वो दिया रिकॉर्डिंग्स भी देखी आन गया गुरसिख इन्हों मैं शिक्षा भी दिखती है इन्हों गुरबाणी संगीत दिया रमजा जड़िया हैं दो हज़ार बारह ग्यारह तो यह मेरे नाल संपर्क हैं सीधा ग्यारह तो पर मैं एक होर चीज़ दस दें ये सिर्फ ये नहीं है कि मेरे नाल संपर्क नहीं है ये जो पहली बार मेरे को आए थे मैं कह लगे कि मैं ना कुछ किया एक थोड़े तो बजुर्गों की गाई हुई चीज़ है वो मैं ना प्यानो के कुछ पैटर्न और कुछ बनाए ने उदे थे कुछ काम किया मैं बड़ा हैरान होया ते ए बोस्टन आए सन मेरे शागिर धन के डॉक्टर अपने हर्षदीप वालिया इंजीनियर धन के वो थे उन आदेक करों को नीत होना देक करे वो तो मासी ही बैठे सा ते ए वो थे बड़ा पुराना जेट टूटा जा वाजा प्यासी वो वाजा लेके ना ए विजान लगे ते मैं पिछा� बंदिश के नाल जो इन्होंने अरेंजमेंट किया से बजा रहे सर पर मैंने शक पाया था राग वडहंस का कुछ लग रहा है तो मैं क्या कंपोजिशन की है तो इन्हें हल्की जी बजाई तो मैं क्या वडहंस दलाणिया ने सो मेरे दादा भाई भाई साहब अवतार सिंह होना की भाई गुरचरण सिंह होना की गाई हुई अलाणिया की रीत ये इन्नी जजब सी इन्नी रसी हुई सी राग वडहंस कि उन्हें प्यानो की अरेंजमेंट बनाए जिस तुम सा फिर संवाद मैं हैरान हो गया कि ये तो वाकई ये डी एन ए यानी कि रोम रोम च गुरबाणी संगीत दिया जी कहते विद्या जी रसी हुई और पारंपरिक विद्या जी गुरु साहब दिन रचनाव ने चाव रहा है इन्नी खिच रही तो इतों सा संवाद शुरू होया सो मैं हूँ यही गल अंग्रेजी भी दसते हैं जी खास करके वडाक वडहंस वाली जी मुलाकात है फ्रेंड्स आई ऑफकोर्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम शेयरिंग इन इन पंजाबी हिज uh you know the brief of biography which dr francesca casio put together for me very quickly condensed it it was a very long one and um, but then uh, i shared the first time when he actually came up i was teaching a retreat uh, uh, either before the retreat or after uh, at one of my students place harshdeep and his uh, uh, wife puneet uh, i was in 2011 12 and he said uh, well you know uh, i have uh, i want to show something he had come all the way from new york and just to show me that, basically, you know, I, I, I was wondering why is he coming around? I mean, people don't usually travel so many, uh, you know, hours to just to meet and go back, you know, the, the back way. So, and he wanted to, you know, say, I want to show you something. I've come all the way to show you something. And I want you to check if it's okay, if I'm doing the right thing or not. So I was like, I never, I said, what would he be wanting to show me? He's a pianist, right, out of the Conservatory of Paris and blah, blah, blah. And he's teaching at the New York Conservatory at the time with one of his former professors. And then I said, well, um, okay. So he started, there was a very, I mean, broken harmonium. Uh, and he started playing on that. I said, well, you know, that sounds a bit like Raghavad Hans, but what is it doing? Uh, because he didn't tell me what composition it was. So uh, then uh, he, uh, I said, but what is this composition? What you're doing? He says, it's an arrangement I did with... Uh, 
uh, of this composition. And he said, which composition? He started playing. It was the Alhania of Guru Nanak, the original composition of Guru Nanak. And I was shocked that how could a fellow who's never been really in Punjab, he's born out of, I mean, half the world across uh, from, from Punjab, and he's, uh, he's, he's got an ear for this. And he has uh, not just that, but he has actually created, I mean, composed an arrangement that goes along with that. So that was our first uh, actual interaction in terms of, uh, uh, of me, uh, you know, bearing witness to what he was up to. And I think uh, more, uh, there are many friends who are outstanding pianists in the world, his age six. But uh, the reason, one of the reasons why he stood out for me and the reason why he is in, uh, you know, I'm having an even conversation is also because of this bridge uh, between the West and the East in a way from the Western, the finest of the Western classical music and the finest of the South Asian classical music. And Cheslov is one of the very few factors who has delved into uh, the uh, Gursik, you know, Gurbani Sangeet. Like you have very few people like Dr. Ranjan Khalsa, who is teaching at the Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. She is a PhD from University of Michigan. She's uh, studied with Dr. Uh, Professor Arvind Mandir. And uh, she did an undergrad, uh, etc. from Hofstra University. And then we've got Professor Francesca Cassio, who's now the Sikh Music College Chair at New York. So we've got few people now who are doing a very serious study and they have a very sound background in the western classical music or western music and then having a you know interest and wanting to spend lifetime or years and years of dedicated research into the music of the guru's court of guru nanak's uh, you know endowments uh, so that i thought was which which stood out and i want i was interested in having cheslov in, in the convers in this conversation and so I'm grateful, uh, Shaslav, that um, for all that you have your interest in Gurbani Sangeet and the fact that you have, uh, uh, you don't have a flirtatious tendency. Um, uh, you know, many people just do it for the sake of it, just like having a little sidekick kind of a thing. But for you to uh, work and, uh, you know, I may also mention that all the notations that are right in Gurmukhi, in Punjabi, uh, Cheslav is the one who, uh, you know, uh, does them into, uh, I can, let me see if I can find something here. Yeah, for example, <laughs> this might be uh, fun. Uh, so I, uh, now for example, this is, uh, look at how mad I am. So it is uh, <laughs> 4, 4.45 a.m., 4th of February, 2020. And you can see Rag Gaudi Purbi Deepaki, and we are Reggio Emilia Roma at the Institute of South Asian Studies, and this is the prelude you can see. So this is what I wrote, right? And it's multiple pages, right? And then he would do something. Is uh, he would, uh, uh, for example, I'm, I'm just showing just random any page that comes for the sake of uh, brevity. So Cheslov does this. So well, I mean, clavichord uh, like that. <laughs> and Tika uh, Talsul Fak Bhadaldi. So, Cheslev has been a wonderful partner in that sense that anything I write in Gurmukhi, in Punjabi, I will write the music because I don't read Western notation and I don't write in Western notation. But Cheslev has been my, uh, you know, in a way, production assistant in the sense that he's, or I don't know what to call, he's you're my transcriber, is it? <laughs> Yeah. I, well, not, I, now I, I'm not sure, and now I'm getting embarrassed because now everybody knows where to find, where, where to look for the mistakes. You know, they know oh. there's a mistake. It's my fault. Now they're telling everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it is, it is normal because you don't really read Gurmukhi, then you always uh, are making an effort. You the sa becomes the ma sometimes, and so on. So, but uh -huh. that's the fun part. But that's anyway. Those are small gory details. But oh, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just yeah. sort of introducing our, uh, you know, our work in the sense to people because it matters uh, what uh, I will ask you, in fact, to tell about what is it that, uh, you know, that is happening, what, what I'm writing. Um, in fact, let's, as we have just spoken about, we'll come to your work. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, how do you see what I'm writing, what the music has been written? It, it's not for the, uh, not at the. It's not about me. It's about the work because future is about has already changed. The the die has been cast. Uh, the Gurbani Sangeet uh, will not be the same anymore. It is not like many people have copied. Like when I said 
at age 18 that I'm going to be setting up an ensemble uh, using the instruments of, uh, you know, Guru's Court. At that time, I was the one who was reviving in the process of recovering the instruments. Nobody else knew the names. This is like later 80s. And some people heard my idea. Then some people took the idea, you know, eavesdropped it uh, or, uh, you know, gave the idea to uh, Badu Saab, for example. They just copied the idea without understanding. So it's about 10,000, five this and five that, but they're playing in unison and they're, you know, there's nobody to teach them proper, no, no playing. But that's, again, I'm not uh, interested in... Um, Offering a critique or uh, analysis of anybody, that's not the purpose today. But the idea of having an ensemble has been copied, but nobody understood how is it that I was in the process of forming the ensemble. It is not that you just uh, take 20 instruments and put them together and play. This is not how, this is not what the idea of an ensemble is or an orchestra, the symphony. So the Sultan Lodi Conservatory, the whenever it be formed, uh, once these politicians have had some sense knocked into their heads and the bureaucracy and the police officials, um, once it forms, it will be a very unique kind of uh, music. To my knowledge, Noshad uh, in Bollywood or in uh, the Indian film industry brought the 100-piece orchestra. But they were mostly playing in unison and me and I have shared some other things with Cheslov and maybe he can shed light on that, how, what he thinks, how the orchestrization was done. But what I'm writing is totally different. It's, uh, it's uh, rag based. Uh, I have no understanding of how chords play. So that's a benefit. It's not a, uh, it's not a lack of it because I'm insulated within the Gurbani Sangeet uh, pedagogy and practice. So what I'm doing is not a copy. I'm not plagiarizing anything. I'm not copying ideas of chords and harmony, this and that. I'm trying to find solutions which are ragic, which are talik. If I may, what do you, um, you have something to say? I've spoken, I guess, plenty. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I have so many things to say about that. <laughs> so I think, I think it might be a good place to start about um, just like, for example, from, from my perspective, from, you know, I, I, I was educated only in, in European music, let's say, generally speaking. And, and now I've been able, you know, by, by good fortune, really, by luck, to, to, to expand that a little bit and, uh, and also to go a little bit beyond the, the let's say, the traditional timeline of uh, European music a little earlier sometimes, as well, all the way up to the present day, because um, we, we, we do contemporary music as well. And, uh, and, and so um, I think that some of the things that really strike me, I think that, that might be an important place to start right now, that really impress me, let's say, about Gurbani Sangeet, um, particularly, is, uh, for example, one of the first things that just kind of bowled me over um, was in the Alanya, actually, and I didn't know, by the way, that it was actually called that. Uh, when uh, <laughs> well, the first time we met, you you told me, and then I, I had to figure out what, what it all meant. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, w for example, when I when I first was learning, like let's say to listen to that, I mean this was a, it's rather difficult for for somebody like me who who uh, you know grew up playing notes and, and things like that and listening to um, music from about let's say 1700 until about the end of the 19th century um, uh, to to kind of react to it. So it was difficult, for example, for the first little bit to understand uh, how to count. Uh, this music and, and uh, to be able to recognize the melodies. But one of the first things that I did when I was able to do that after a few times after uh, listening to this piece for a little while um, was that I, I, I mapped out the form of the piece in kind of my own uh, primitive way just so I could have a reference to see if something was going on. And then I saw that the form that, I, that came out of that particular recording that I was listening to was uh, a mirror form. I mean, it was exactly like you're, if, you're two, if you put your two hands and each of the sections is a melodic section, and and it, and it flipped over just like that in a in a in a very in a, in a perfectly symmetrical way. And so when I looked at that and I kind of sat back and I said, well, wait a minute, there's something going on here that I don't understand. <laughs> and it's so interesting because because form. Well, there's this thought, uh, for example, in the aesthetics. Um, uh, that says something like that form is is unity and diversity, 
And I kind of like that idea a lot. I think it, it says a lot about uh, people and how we write music and, and what we write it for. And, and so uh, uh, I, I never grew up with that kind of a uh, knowledge of that. Now, I, was, I did have, of course, some exposure to the repertoire and, and generally the, the cultural context, of course, through my dad, who, as you said, sometimes hummed, but not only did he hum, he also sometimes uh, put recordings on. Uh, and, and so there was always some kind of a background contact. But I had never really had any tools to seriously think about this. And, and that seemed like such a shame to me after I, for example, saw the form that, wow, look, this is so interesting and, and nobody knows about this. I mean, nobody's really studying this. I, I tried to find somebody um, uh, that could tell me about this and, and I couldn't find any literature and things like that. So I started to think, well, there's, there, if this piece is like that, well, then maybe all of the other pieces are like that too. Maybe not in the same form, but they must have some kind of form. And, and so I started digging a little bit deeper and deeper, and then by good fortune I got an email, I think it was, was it 2012 or 2011, yeah, in New York, from my father, a very nonchalant, you know my father, he was kind of a nonchalant guy, and he said, oh son, uh, there's an there's a important uh, guy in, uh, in your area, if you have some time, go try to meet him, something like this. <laughs> well, I see, it was him. <laughs> uh, and so I said, well, you know, Dad says so, so uh, let's do it. And, uh, and that was when I uh, sort of trekked to Boston, <laughs> uh, because it was in uh, um, Natick, was it somewhere? Yes, yes, in Natick. Yeah, yeah I remember it correctly. I mean, it's not so important, but just under Boston, uh, around Boston. And, and uh, yeah, I, I had all kinds of trouble getting there, but I'll tell the story another time. And, and, yeah. and, uh, and so, and from that time, I've... I, I, I fully realized kind of what was going on, um, that, that this, somebody did remember this. And so that was just one aspect. Um, and honestly, I've only uh, recently started trying to figure out the rhythm. And maybe I'm going the opposite way, because probably that's the foundation stone. But, but me, I mean, the melodies are just easier for me to, to recognize. And... Uh, and on top of that, I mean, so that's a, that's a general, let's say, remark about, about the amazing uh, possibility, the formal possibilities that we have in the music. But then if you dig deeper, I mean, things get even more interesting. So you have sections, for example, that are uh, twice as long as other sections. I mean, exactly, by beat. And um, once you start perceiving that kind of stuff while listening to the music and the proportions are all kind of laid out in front of you, well, then you start uh, getting into all kind of geometric analysis that, for example, um, I mean, much in the way that, that we would approach a piece like, let's say, the one that I just played uh, at the beginning, um, that the same kinds of questions, serious um, musical, musicological questions can be applied to this tradition, and yet I couldn't find any information on it. And so that was what really intrigued me about this. And um, so, uh, yeah, and that, that's how I've been kind of keeping up with this. And so uh, one of the ideas, one of the other ideas, for example, that really strikes me um, is it seems to me, and, and uh, of course, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that there's a very crucial uh, musical role, actually, played by the uh, lyrics, by the bani being sung. Uh, and the, and, the, and the, the form of the music really helps us, I think, potentially, and, and my language isn't as, as good as I'd like it to be, so I have trouble, of course, understanding bani in the, in the original. But it, it seems to me that the formal aspects of the music may have a lot to tell us about the meaning of the actual hymns, of the actual poems. And uh, so those kinds of ideas are ideas that I, I, uh, I, I, I think should be explored by, by uh, you know, by mainstream musicology, really, because there's so much that hasn't been looked at. And um, now, so that's about compositions per se. Then we can talk a little bit about the system, which, firstly, I think uh, it's important to say that when I've uh, seen the results of the processes and of the metho methodology, um, and also when I've uh, heard, uh, for example, uh, you speak about them, um, uh, it, it, one of the very first things that struck me is that how similar they were to really, really top instrumental 
practice of, uh, of the Western world, of Europe, how the thinking about the instrument, let's say, uh, for example, um, uh, one of the things I think that is good practice is uh, when we can, uh, when we have a, uh, when we have somebody who wants to learn an instrument, the first thing that you have to do is become familiar with the possibilities that you have on the instrument. And now, for example, um, it's common practice, from what I understand, when practicing instruments um, in uh, in the Gurbani tradition, that different strikes of the instrument are um, practiced. So that is something like articulation, like what I would think of as articulation. And I saw like a direct link between how, like we, for example, uh, uh, when uh, we used to practice fugues, where where you have a subject. And you would change the articulation every time. You'd make rules for yourself. So it's not only about learning the actual piece or learning to play it on any instrument. It's also about being flexible within the piece. And um, so those kinds of ideas, I think, that are present uh, are really intriguing. That that you have a separate, a sort of standalone tradition, really, uh, that somehow by by some miracle survived. And it's come to the same conclusion that the you know really top, uh, uh, well researched and scholarly uh, uh, instrumental music came to, and I think that's just so um, important to to try to talk about that and try to create some kind of a space where these things can be first looked at, understood, but also talked about and disseminated. Really, also, yeah. But um, so I think I think all of those things and and. So those are again the, the musical aspects, and then we can go into all kinds of other things. And uh, one thing that I really treasure about uh, about the tradition, let's say, therefore about you as well, is how serious the scholarship is. And I mean, the, the so when something is approached, it's there's too many, there's too many musicians, and I come into contact with musicians like this all the time, that just kind of play because. Uh, it's it's supposed to be played, but you ask them something a little bit more specific about the music, and and you're 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 kind of met with a blank stare, and that's one of the things uh, that's really prized. Uh, and so and 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 it's and it, for example, Beethoven was a guy who took music extraordinarily seriously, and I think uh, not not enough musicians learn from that, and 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 so it's a really good practice. But Beethoven. It said um, when he was, for example, writing his mass, his uh, his uh, uh, Misa Solemnis, which was the D major mass, um, he wrote it in about 1821-22, uh, actually the same time that he wrote uh, that uh, uh, piece. That that was the uh, uh, third movement of a sonata, and he wrote the sonata at the same time. Before writing it, he spent about uh, almost two months, from what I understand, in a library studying music studying Bach and studying Gregorian chant and, and learning about how these old guys, how the older uh, music dealt with certain problems, dealt with certain liturgy, that, like that's serious. And I think um, a person that, that tries to play Beethoven without at least attempting, because people have of course different opportunities, so sometimes you don't have enough opportunity or, I mean resources, and, but at least attempting to understand those kinds of things I think it becomes very difficult then to play Beethoven properly. So, so prizing that kind of uh, serious approach to music, I think, is something I also very much appreciate in this, in the Gurbani tradition, and it, where it's very present from what I've been able to, to um, notice. So, I, okay, so that gives us a little bit of the context. Uh, but I think uh, you asked about the work in particular. Uh, but well, well, we'll come to the work now later. We've spoken enough. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's let's have a break from talking. Uh, of course. And um, uh, you've played uh, the Beethoven Sonata. We'll talk about that also. You can uh, you know analyze it for us later. Uh, what uh, can you play next? Uh, can you uh, can we play some Bach? Maybe you've had Beethoven. Absolutely. That you mentioned about Bach. That Beethoven was studying Bach also. Uh, can we go there? Can you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, plus back. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Maybe a maybe a short maybe a short prelude or something like that. It can be long too. We have all the time. 
short uh, Bach. I uh, missed a few notes here. My hands got a little cold. I talked too much. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's an interesting piece to look at uh, possibilities that we can, that we have on the piano um, and other keyboard instruments. And I think uh, possibilities that, that can kind of be explored a little bit on the piano. For example, a lot of people tend to play it straight. You know? <laughs> the sound sound rather even, but I think a lot of very interesting, almost dance-like elements of the music come out if we try to phrase it in some kind of a, uh, uh, if I can exaggerate the phrasing a little bit, uh, for example. And, and then if you play that in tempo and even, you, you get something like... kinds of possibilities are really interesting to explore in those Bach preludes because luckily, I guess, or, or maybe unluckily, but uh, at the time there was no real habit of phrasing music, let's say, or uh, giving dynamic marking, so we can take a little bit more freedom with those kinds of um, pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, would, uh, would, you like to, would you like to play something? Where would you take us now? I, I don't want you to your hands to cool down. <laughs> so let's have let's have a session. Of course. Let's let's. Well, I mean, uh, 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 well, what I was saying earlier. I mean, um, I, I don't know uh, um, how much uh, we want to hear me play, really. But um, I can I can talk a little bit about the things I was talking about. For example, with the. Uh, changing of articulation in themes. If we take a Bach fugue, let's see if I can remember a few notes. Yeah. Uh, and then the third voice would come in. So now if you take something like that, then we can flip the articulation. And That's, that's always an interesting possibility. Um, well, actually, uh, Paolo uh, yesterday inspired me a little bit um, when he was talking about landscapes and music. I thought that was a fabulous metaphor uh, to make uh, in terms of the, the, the different planes that we can get in music, um, which I think can be done very well on the piano uh, because of the dynamic possibilities. So, for example, um, if, we, if we look at some uh, 
more contemporary music, if we if we go to Debussy, let's say, and we, we can set up the plane something like this.
So that was... Um, that was brilliant. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. It was uh, uh, Debussy, uh, and I, I hope the, the plans can be appreciated um, that, that we can really do on the piano that I think works just so well. And I mean, uh, Paolo, Paolo was doing it much better, I can say, but, <laughs> but I mean, the possibilities are really there. So, for example, in this section, we, can have, we have three levels of sound that we get on the piano, and they all kind of merge into this wavy, like, for example, uh, in this section. Um, That's a, a really, so we have this really low almost kind of murmuring. Then we have a melody somewhere in the middle. What the notes are? And then we have this big splash up top. The, 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 and I think the metaphor that uh, Paolo used yesterday was fantastic about it being like a landscape. I mean, maybe this is, though, I mean, this piece does have a story behind it. Um, I don't know, do you want to hear the story? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so the, you know, Debussy was a guy that he always uh, put the title of pieces at the end of a piece. Um, and so, and, and so, so as not to suggest anything by his titles to the player. He wanted the player to come up with his own imagination of it, rather than put it at the beginning and be, make it obvious. And uh, so, what, so that's kind of interesting. And, and this piece in particular, it's a prelude. Um, it was, uh, it's called La Cathédrale Engloutie in French, which of course in English means um, the sunken cathedral. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's based on a legend from, uh, I believe it was uh, Britannia in, uh, in France. And uh, the legend is about a cathedral that was underwater. It was a sunken cathedral. And uh, a certain day, the cathedral appears out of the water. It comes out with all of the organs playing and everything. And then in the evening, it goes back down underwater. And so that kind of, that story, I think, helps a lot in the imagination of this piece, where, where we start off with this kind of underwater world, but you hear, it's almost like you're an inhabitant and you hear the bells from far away, um, which, by the way, is, of course, a, a technical aspect of piano playing that, um, uh, uh, that we can, you know, get. So, so when we play with flatter fingers um, and, and play with the pillows of our finger, uh, then we can get uh, a softer or a far away sound, whereas if we play with our curved fingers, we get a very direct sound. And so it starts off with this underwater. So it's kind of like wavy and watery, but you hear the bells, and the water I think is probably down here, the depths, you know. And then you have the bell again. section that I was just showing earlier, that's the cathedral slowly rising out, and then it stabilizes when all the organs are playing into this, you know, like an organesque kind of a, a, a piece, uh, which, by the way, that part and some other parts of this piece require the third pedal of the piano, which is something that I feel that in contemporary music just isn't used enough. Um, both by composers and uh, performers. Um, uh, the, the middle pedal is, is a really interesting pedal. I mean, it works pretty much like the left pedal, which is the sustain pedal. So when you have the, um, if you have an accompaniment, let's say like you often do in Chopin, that's quite wide. But that's supposed to be the background. So you want to play it. Uh, and then you can put a melody on top of that. Pedal. 
on the right pedal, um, it's the softening pedal. It softens the piano. So in a very simple, you know, if or now I played that with approximately the same strength, but it's quite different. But the middle pedal is a special pedal. It, I mean, it works like I said, like the uh, right pedal, except that it sustains only the sound that you keep while you're pressing it. And so we have this, um, for example, this low note should be kept. You see, my right pedal is not touching the, the right, and we have the. But that pedal is that uh, note is sustained, and uh, I think that's a really interesting effect that, like I said, isn't used so often. Um, but it is used in the Debussy, or at least um, I, I think it should be used there. <laughs> So um, that that's uh, that's a little bit about the piano as well. Um, I mean, you know, there's there's uh, so many exciting things to talk about. Um, uh, I did mention, I think, to you that I'm a little, I'm a bit in Beethoven mode, and uh, uh -huh. so uh, and Beethoven is really kind of a giant character that we can talk a lot about. So, but anyway. Uh, in terms of, for example, I found it fascinating that there was this concept, again, in Gubani Sengit, that I believe, and please correct the pronunciation if I have it wrong or if I have the concept wrong, called Tal Parans. Am I right about yes, that? Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Tal Parans. So, so, if I understand this correctly, and if I can you put it kind of in my own words, it's when you have a rhythmic pattern, which is normally played, let's say, on a percussive instrument, uh, but it's uh, played with uh, uh, a melody, so with the changing notes, rather. Um, is that uh, approximately correct? Yeah, 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 of course. There's a tar parans, not tal, but tar is string, string parans, basically musical note, parans. Uh, using musical notes. Mm. So I think something like that might be uh, very interesting to look at. Let's say from a perspective uh, perspective of Beethoven, um, and I, I'd be curious to see if I may. I don't know if I'm allowed, but uh, may I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> so there's this, uh, uh, for example, this fragment towards the end of that piece where. Um, it starts with the flipped over fugue, so it starts with the longish theme. So this is a, a rather regular beat, but then it, it does something quite dramatic at that point. It doubles. There's really three voices playing it, and in this section, the, the, the left hand has it actually extended. So first, it was it was made triply short. That's the same thing as the theme. Just ex just made quicker, and then it's and then it's made longer um, in the in the left hand. Um, so and it's flipped back upside back uh, the right way up, so to speak. Uh, part for me where the it's the, the tempo is doubled even more but the theme remains the same the melody and then it kind of explodes into this final so the, the question that I'm kind of building is
this. So that's a very sort of regular, I would say, expansion on the rhythm. It's like a, it's like an exploration of what the yeah, rhythm so can example, do. For example, dhage ghena, like dhage nati dhage dhati ghena. So these are patterns. Basically, the chant or uh, the the uh, rela and chapkas. There's a very very uh, fatkis, for example. So they're, they're basically mm -hmm. chant patterns, having one pattern and making multiple, like mishr jati, as we would say. Yes. So we have one one base pattern, and then dhage nati dhage dhage nati dhage trikrda dhati genna dhage nati dhage deta deta krda dhage dunga nage trikrda dhati dhage trikrda krda dhati da. So, for example, exploring like that. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, the accents were, were sort of shifted there. So that's the explore. Yeah, that's, I think that's fantastic. And so, in terms uh, so of you can have, for example, heavy words like a dhage nati dhage or kitta dhage dikhe nage dikhe dhage dikhe nage dikhe dhage. So kitta dhage dikhe nage dikhe dhage. So you have uh, the dirga inside. The dir or the heavy before or after. You can choose if you're doing four. You can make. Uh, uh, so kedha is the second is heavier. Kedha 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 So you can always make those stresses. You can, uh, as we call sarkaroni, you take these stresses on a on a walk on, on a stroll, and you can uh, make if you're going 16 times the pace. The art would be to make any one of those 16 times a beat uh, heavier and the other softer. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I you see. Know, yeah, and so in that between Lagu Guru Pulita, uh, one beat uh, or a Guru is two beats. So you can have one beat, two beats, or blends of one and two. That's three or multiples. And Pulita is subtle. And then the Rasva Dirga, because the melody Rasva is, should always be mellifluous. And Dirga is profound. Again, there's a Pulita subtle. So these six between them can make a fantastic, you know, portraiture. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, that's that's super. That's so interesting because so this, the structure remains the same and the accents are moved over, and um, he, he, here it's almost like the opposite, where the where the accents stay the same, but the you know it's 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 um, that's really interesting. So you and, know uh, that that is it's not just that is one couple that you've played. So you have multiple things. I mean, if there's a concept, you can always reverse them. So you can have, uh -huh. uh, for example, the same uh, uh, you know. Dirga, uh, let's say the first out of the four, or first out of the three, dhagin, dhigin, nagin, titat, katrik, dhetat. So the first one is there. So dhagin, dhugin, natat, katrik, dhetat, dadi, ken, dhakid, dadi, ken, dhakid, dadi. So you can do that. Kedhage, dhigin, nagin, katrik, dhetat. So you can you can play. I mean, there's no binding as such. Once a concept yeah. exists, you can like you, if you are, like I am a person. I can cry at one time. I can shed tears of joy. I have the freedom to to actually shed tears of sorrow, and I can be silent. I can be chirpy. I can do anything. So a pattern rhythm is like that. It's alive. It's it's a living organism. It's it's a it's mm -hmm. thriving. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's no binding as such. It's a freedom. Uh -huh, uh -huh, That's fantastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, fantastic. It is. I mean, to see this 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 kind of a a link between these two things is really yeah. fascinating. And so this, um, uh, uh, this this whole thing about the you know uh, this uh, uh, Goldberg variations. If you can go back to Bach, uh, tell us about them. Can you demonstrate something that you like in them? Um, oh, absolutely. One of the canons or something. I mean, you know, I, I understand that there's a very good example of counterpoints. I know that you were playing, but uh, specifically by uh, giving an example, because I've been writing counterpoints now <laughs> from the ragging perspective. So I'll be very yes, glad to yes, see what was Mark doing with his counterpoints. Indeed, absolutely. Well, uh, so, so uh, it's a very good example, of course, of total counterpoints. Uh, probably some of the best uh, music ever written for the keyboard. Uh, Let's see if I can, uh, this is something like a uh, baby first variation. Uh, something on the chest of Can you hear me? Happened 
to the microphone again. The, the distortion has come back. Um, what? Uh, yeah, now it's better. No, it's not. Um, hello, can you say something? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, is, it, is it an auto? Does it? Uh, does these uh, microphone do these microphones automatically switch to? They mirror automatically, or they are not set on manual mode. They're changing. Uh, uh, just now, it changed. Everything changed. There's a distortion, okay, which was absolutely fine. Like a kr kr when you speak, there's a distortion. Let me, let me check very quickly, if I may. Yeah. Uh, it should be all right. So it's a... It's yeah. a uh, um, just can you mute once your microphone and switch it on? How is it, uh, how is it now? No, it's, there's a distortion there still. Well, nothing's uh, changed exactly. It's difficult for me to... I move it back and now? No, it's the same. It's just crackling. It's just... Uh... <laughs> Rima Teg says your, your voice is coming from intergalactic space. But that's the experience. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Bangalore is listening to you. <laughs> Shaggy Singh says it's crackling. That's strange. The uh, settings haven't changed. Uh, it's okay. Not a problem. We can... It was all wonderful before. Suddenly, suddenly it changed. You know, it was all good moments ago. Then, just before you began to play, it it, it somehow started crackling. No, it's it's the um, it's the audio. I don't know, Charles saying maybe you can log back, but uh, I don't know if that's a good idea right now. I don't know if it's through with Skype because it, it may be the microphones. You're connected to this very large, um, you know, well, the the microphones. Are, none of the settings change. I just thought that they're really low, so I can't imagine that. Maybe, maybe we can try to re reconnect. Yes, just try to reconnect, yeah. Okay. Let's let's do that. Um, let me let me call you back, okay? All right. And, uh, we'll see. Um, well, let's see. Um, I guess I am here. No, it's still there. The same uh, same sound issue. Um, let me. Let me call you back. Dosto, Mahabhi Chona, a technical uh, aspect hai ga, par man lag da ke jadi vaarta hai ghi hai, oho bakaida honi chahi di hai jadi naal, apan sunne bhi, samjh bhi aave, aur sangeet da apan maan kar saki hai, apan maan saki hai, jo sangeet tak vajre hai. Apan dekh de ahun, chess love ki kar rahe hange, um, can you? Uh, I don't have the voice at all now. Yes, yes. Uh, now, now you have, but again, there's a distortion coming. That crackling sound is uh, quite profuse. Um, That's yeah. Can you just try and play again? Sure. Something just to try. Uh, no. There's a big problem. Uh, maybe I can try specifically to the uh, computer microphone. Maybe that will be okay. Yeah. And you need to maybe put the uh, the other uh, you know uh, unit, the camera. I tried to call it. Uh, nobody. I think you have to accept the call in the other side as well. Uh, how, how is the input now? Oh, much better. Yes, much clearer. Okay. Can you can you play and uh, can you? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm calling on the other other device as well. Um, okay. Let me. Yeah. 
Uh, just hold on a second. And uh, uh, just a sec, just a sec. And uh, there we go. ਅਸੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਮਾਈਕਰੋਫੋਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਕੰਪਿਊਟਰ ਦਾ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਦੋਸਤੋ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਮਾਫ ਕਰਨਾ ਜਸਟ ਬੇਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਫੋਰ ਅ ਮੋਮੈਂਟ ਸੋ ਜਸਟ ਫੋਰ ਮੀ ਐਕਸੈਪਟ ਦਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕਾਲ okay so the other one the other one is not uh, on yet yeah it's uh, I, i can't see a call coming through uh, okay um just a sec sure is it now uh no not yet I'm uh, I'm not getting a call on the uh CC account. Okay. Okay. Let's see now if it comes. Did you get it? Uh no. Nothing's coming. Okay, let me dial all together again. Just give us a moment guys. Just uh bear with me. bear with us rather trying to find a solution a good solution so that you guys can relish relish the work Yes, it's okay now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is back. We are back. Uh, we are back, guys. So all those uh, BBS haters who are leaving the call, I hate you just because we are trying to sort the things out for you guys. And you have uh, the courage to leave the call. I love that. <laughs> All right, is it is the shot okay? I wouldn't do that people if I was on a call like this. Um Pardon? Yes, you can now sit down. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Um that was a technical hiccup. So anyway, yeah, let's let's play something now uh with uh, uh you know. Sure. Uh, well, we were just speaking about the Goldberg variations. I think it's a great piece um, because they, um, it's one of those pieces that, that where the story behind it doesn't really tell us anything about the piece and because it's a fantastic piece. I mean, it's, 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 I would say it's probably the most influential piece of keyboard music that we have. And, uh-huh. uh, and, a pair, and the story goes that it was written uh, because uh, there was a count who couldn't fall asleep. 
And he commissioned Bach to write extremely long variations to help him fall asleep. And uh, so that first variation that I was playing, if we play it like that, uh, I mean, there's no, there's a, it's very difficult to imagine somebody falling asleep to it. You know, we have a... <laughs> That's not the best example of counterpoint, though it's quite easy to imagine what it is, where you have a theme-like structure in the right hand first. And kind of dance in the, in the, almost a dance in the left, you know. So that is a piece that has three separate voices in it. Um, there's two in the right hand, and, and they're in canon. Canon is, is when there's two separate voices that, with some uh, moving over, uh, follow each other exactly. So the melodies are exactly the same at an interval of a sixth. And then we have the third hand, that's, uh, so the, the, sorry, third voice, of course, played by the second hand. We only have two hands. <laughs> uh, Sometimes, maybe unfortunately, that's uh, kind of playing this light accompaniment figure. Um, it's not really an accompaniment, though, because it's easy to see what a voice is. So, again, uh, you can play it and try to bring out one of the inner voices, again, which is a very uh, unique thing that can be done uh, on the piano. And it wasn't able to be done on instruments in box time, um, uh, at least not as much as that we could do it on the piano. So we had harpsichords, for example, that uh, had two keyboards where one of them would be plucking all the strings available to that note and the other only plucking one or uh, less. And so the, the, one of the keyboards would be, uh, we, we would call those terraced dynamics. So it's much, much quieter than the other one. And so we could go loud, soft. But the kind of fine control that you have is possible on the piano. So for example, I can bring out the middle voice Approximately there, and uh, and then I can bring up the top top voice. Say which 
one of those voices makes more sense uh, in that context? I mean, uh, uh, probably the most interesting way to play it would be to, to sometimes bring in one voice and sometimes bring in another voice. And so you could have like a... And then, of course, you have that added uh, aspect of articulation, and then you get a whole bunch of interesting possibilities. So you could uh, start the piece at a kind of quiet level, and you go... And then Chicago... than I did, <laughs> and they can come up with all kinds of interesting, uh, with a really orchestral feel to the counterpoint. So if I turn over a little bit and go to this instrument over here, um, which of course is the clavichord, um, the same one actually that uh, was uh, borrowed me in preparation for our project in, in Rome about uh, two months ago, I'm very grateful by the way that, that the... Uh, that I was able to borrow it, and, and I still have it, as, as, uh, as you see, and, and so that's very, uh, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, it's a fantastic instrument. I, I hope it'll be hearable, because it's very quiet. It's a very quiet instrument, and um, just to, if, I, if I can play a fragment of that same canon, it'll be a little bit um, uh, difficult, because uh, uh, the range isn't uh, big enough of the instrument, but... So I don't know if that is audible. Is that audible at all? A um, little bit, very little. But let's yeah. uh, just try to play. Uh, can you? Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not as audible, but uh, we'll see. Um, I mean, it is a generally quiet instrument, so so it's okay. But if, if if something can be heard, then I think we'll have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Play, play, play. And so, for example. Um, that kind of selectivity in terms of voice leading that we can reach on the piano, I think would be basically impossible to do on the clavichord. Um, I mean, or at least it would have to be done in different ways. So a voice that, that you would play in legato would naturally become more audible, I think. Uh, so if we can try that. Uh, can you try and uh, plug in the audio again, the microphone, maybe? Just see if, because you have a microphone next to the clavichord. Can you sure. try that for a moment? And let's see if it has sorted itself out. Maybe okay. it might be a good idea. Just let's try it. Let's try that, yeah. Yeah, it's it's better now. It's come come over. All right. Uh, let people see your face up close. Yeah. <laughs> better make sure it's smiling then. Uh, is is that better? It's on the microphone. Yes, now. it is okay now. Let's now play the club chord. Yeah. Sure. Let's give it a try. Was that, was that more audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now play, play, now play. Yeah, go ahead. Excellent. So, um, well, so that was the canon. And, and uh, again, it's the same thing that was played on the piano. I 
hope uh, that we all noticed, of course, that the clavichord is tuned uh, a semitone lower in this case, uh, at, with A at uh, 415. So if I play A, A on the clavichord and A on the piano, same A. Yes, it's a difference, yeah. It's a semitone higher, and uh, uh, so that uh, I'm happy because I, I tuned the clavichord myself, so that means it's in tune, uh, <laughs> at least somewhat. <laughs> but, uh, um, I mean, this uh, particular clavichord, it's a mean tone tuning, which I think is very interesting. Actually, well, here's something you might find very cool about, about the tuning here. Um, generally, mean tone temperaments... Um, makes the fourth sound much wider. And so if I play a regular major, major scale, let's say, so when we got to the fourth there, I, I believe uh, we were able to hear this kind of really wide fourth. Um, I don't know how audible was that. Was that audible? It's okay, just play, just play, yeah. Speak a little slow. Speak softly and then play. Okay, so the, the, the fourth, I think. Yeah? So if we listen to the fifth, it's not bad. But if we listen to the fourth, it's, it's a very strange interval to our ears. And, um, I was wondering, maybe, is that, uh, is that one of the rag notes? Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, but I can barely hear it, so don't ask me that question from here. <laughs> just play, so just because you're recording, we'll uh, su superimpose the audio later. Just play, just tell your story. Uh, I can barely hear it, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a very, very quiet instrument. Uh, but that would be no, interesting. It's, it's yeah. again distorted. It's not about quietitude. It's again distorted, but when you play the clavichord, it's audible. Don't worry, just play. Just ignore okay. it and play for now, yeah. And then we sort of get out of the range. Um, but that's basically what the clavichord sounds, and I don't know if it will be audible, but uh, we can try to show the very unique feature of uh, the clavichord, which is that it can do vibrato on a, on, a, on a sound. So, for example, Control, I think it can become very good as well. So, for example, the aria from the Goldberg Variations. Let us, uh, I think we'll have to skip the clavichord part today now uh, because okay. the sound is distorted. If you can remove the uh, microphone uh, out again 
and uh, let us uh, go back to the piano because we are not able to uh, understand anything when you speak at least we were able to hear through the microphone even if it was distorted but we could make it out what you were playing at least the notes were audible from far let's just remove yeah. that remove the uh, cord maybe out again from the of the microphones yeah. Yes, it's gone. Now I'm back on the computer microphone. Okay. Is that better? So that's much better now. Let's uh, let's get back to the piano now. Um, okay. Uh, can we go to Mozart? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I think you know it's always worth uh, thinking about um, composers in their wider context, and by comparing them, let's say, to their uh, you know predecessors and descendants, so to speak. And I think Mozart fits somewhere. Um, along the line of Chopin, I think the, the father, let's say, of all of our music <laughs> is Bach, and after Bach, it kind of splits up into two, and I would say that one of those lines goes through Mozart, and the other one goes through Beethoven, and, and then afterwards, they get to uh, their further kind of avatars, um, but that's kind of the way it goes, and so Mozart's Music, like if we can think of an example, something like this. see those pieces because they've survived, his father was meticulous in some places, you, you see these perfect structures that, uh, that were already there somewhere in his head, and it's just, uh, like I said, a little bit unfair. And so with Mozart, you don't see any of that work that you see, let's say, in Beethoven, um, uh, or even in, in, in Bach, the, 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 the knowledge. With Mozart, it's kind of just like nature. And um, I think that comes out a little bit of his, in his music. You have all of these light, delightful kind of textures that are very simple. But it was, I think, Vladimir Horowitz that said the Bach is the easiest for the amateur and the most difficult for the professional. I see. Because there's no sound that you can cover with your pedaling, for example. There's no sound. Everybody knows when you hit a wrong note because the notes are all in the, exactly the right place. And so. Uh, you know, that 
kind of texture is just so delightful and so nerve-wracking to play in public, you know. I would say even the really big piano, piano kind of composers like Liszt, for example, if you take an example like of this piece, I mean, nobody can count the notes that I played in the middle. And in fact, I'm not even sure how many I did play and how many I didn't play. And that's probably the point. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the impression that the chord makes is much more important. And so um, that kind of trickery can't be done with Mozart. You have to hit all of the notes and you have to hit them evenly, you have to hit them articulately. And, and that's why I think uh, that was a little bit what motivated Horowitz when he was saying that. Um, so yeah, with, with Mozart, I think... Uh, can, you, can you play an excerpt from a sonata of uh, Mozart? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, 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 those, were, those were two, but um, maybe a fantasy. Um, there's this fantastic fantasy that Mozart wrote, one of the few times that he was sad. Chopin, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, you you've sort of spoken a lot uh, in our conversations. Um, you know the doctrines, uh, preludes, and etudes. Um, can you demonstrate some of them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with, with Chopin, I think it's very. I think I think actually that when I was talking about the two lines, I think Chopin belongs to the Mozart line. Chopin exactly. is very much melodic and. Uh, sort of lighter textures than you find in the more serious kind of Germanic music. Uh, Chopin, of course, is Polish, so um, uh, Slavic rather than Germanic. And uh, it was apt to use a lot of uh, different kind of uh, Polish folk melodies, let's say, and mazurkas and things. Uh, but but we, we can, um, I think, probably the essence of Chopin and his virtuosity, I think, is probably in his etudes. Um, which, actually, is interesting to note that were, they were published in the same book, in the same edition as his nocturnes. And I think that kind of points us in the right direction of how to interpret them. I think the expression probably has to be as powerful as the nocturnes, just much, much, much quicker, of course. And so, but I think that's a very interesting way of thinking about the etudes. And um, so, for example, I don't know, uh, maybe the, the Opus 25 and uh, 12, if I could try to uh, demonstrate the motion. <laughs> Thank you. 
Quite a quite a structure really builds, huh? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, it's it's basically a chord structure that just expanded all over the keyboard. Yeah. So you have really fleet, fleets really quickly. From these, I mean, from Schubert is uh, more about romantics, isn't it? Uh, That's right. How how do you uh, can you can you can you demonstrate something from him for us to understand? Well, I think Schubert uh, Schubert is sort of in between um, the, the romantics and Mozart. He's kind of the in between space. I see. And, I see. Um, it's it's a really interesting kind of. Piano playing, it's very lyrical. Schubert um, also died very young, like Mozart, uh, and in his short life, I believe it was 32 that he died, he was, uh, he wrote uh, 600 different songs. Uh -huh. Songs, I mean, with lyrics and uh, piano, a apart from a lot of piano music, orchestra music, so he was a really prodigious kind of a writer. Uh, but the focus of his music was really uh, lyrical music, so songs, and and you can, that really comes through, I think, in a lot of his compositions. Like, I don't know um, if uh, how well this will come off, but for example, uh, just a few bars, if I can remember, of a uh, impromptu. Um, <laughs> Interesting, very, very particular movement, very, very velvetish. Absolutely, and, and just so lyrical. And, and that's one of the composers that can, can really say, I believe, that he started this whole idea of being able to sing on the piano. And, I uh, see. And so you see these, these kind of reaching, very vocal, you could say, melodic lines. That's then, I think, expect that idea. Uh, I wouldn't say, maybe it wasn't taken directly from Schubert, but it was somehow in the air, and Chopin just made it into a whole other I see. Uh, level. And how about Schubert? How is he, I mean, uh, if you can demonstrate something from him as, to, to compare the two, Schubert and Schubert, they're somehow taken in the same breath, the names. 
Yeah, yeah, Sch Schumann and Schubert, their names are kind of similar. And so Schubert and uh, Schumann, so very uh, similar, very important kind of impact on uh, music history. He led this very important uh, uh, review journal. I for I've forgotten the name at the moment, uh, but it, it was uh, uh, very famous. And he was the first, one of the first reviewers, actually, to notice Chopin. And uh, he wrote an article uh, the night, uh, the day after, or uh, he heard Chopin, and the, the title was "It's Gentleman Chapeau Bas." Hats off! There's a genius in the room. There's a genius in Vienna. And uh, so those kinds of um, facts, I think, are really important about Schumann. Uh, Schumann had a kind of tragic history in his life. He destroyed his hand. Um, and I've forgotten now which one, if it was his left or his right hand, but he wanted to increase the uh, um, versatility of his fourth finger in particular, because uh, the fourth finger is the most difficult finger that we have, uh, because it's joined with the third finger in our wrist sections. Um, and he attached a kind of a contraction to it overnight that was suggested to him by a Frenchman, and, he kept, and that was supposed to stretch his finger out. And when he awoke the next morning, his hand was destroyed, and he was never able to reach a level of virtuosity that he very much wanted to. He, uh, he wrecked his own hand. But I think for me, probably, Schumann is the archetypal kind of romantic composer um, by being so proficient, just so excellent at writing miniatures. And his miniatures are just gems. And uh, so again, if we can take a phrase, something like a phrase or two uh, from the Kinderschen, it's a der Dichterspricht, which means in, uh, in English, the, the poet speaks. And it's an excellent, excellent piece. Wow, that's, that sense of space is stunning, actually. It's and almost it, like it. weaving, uh, uh, you know, weaving with the, with the silence. Yeah. Almost like, uh, oh, that was very powerful. 
That takes yeah. a lot of courage. Nowadays, we don't really find much silence, isn't it? There's almost a lot of movement, a lot of noise, and a lot of... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's uh, you know, we have uh, uh, people getting tattooed all over the body. So, it's like that. There's no space for, for, for nature to be seen. It's all artificiality, and that's somehow seen as shake. Um, uh, taking taking the idea of melody a little too far, the idea of harmony, the idea of chords and chorus a little too far. Um, even within the melodic spaces, the way uh, the, the silence would uh, enter or the sustenance of a note uh, that is that is so, uh, you know, uh, I mean, for me, it's very difficult to fathom how the idea of music may have changed. What music was? I think the definition seems to have changed a lot. Of course, there are people who are composing some very fine classical music. Even in Indian, uh, South Asian uh, classical music, there's a lot of, uh, for the last hundred odd years, uh, there's, too much, uh, there's too much of movement. Whereas the idea of uh, the sustenance of the note, the idea of lean, how a note merges into another, uh, that, that sense is gone in a way. And how do you uh, awaken a note how do you sustain it over a desired period of time? Then do you put it to rest? The etiquette of awakening a note, sustaining a note, and to, you know, letting it go into silence where you plucked it from. Exactly. Uh, those sensibilities I uh, seldom get to hear. Yeah. People are very chirpy, very artificial, rootless, uh, directionless, rudderless. I don't know what to make, um, make of that. And there's monotony. Uh, the whole idea, the way I'm seeing, as you see from when you mentioned a very moving anecdote from Beethoven's uh, life or, or his work that he spent two months researching. They're trying to break monotony. It's not just how, as I always say in, when I teach, learning heritage music is not to try and limit yourself. It is in fact telling you what all, uh, educating you what all has already happened, what all has al already transpired. And that, if you think you're a genius, then you will know what next to do. That will be contemporary music. Contemporary music is not painting white over white, black over black. That is already, the, the wall is already painted, the wall already exists. If contemporary music would be creating a new wall, a new foundation, a new colors, new color shades, this, this, it's, it's, it's infinite possibility. That is composition. Not aping, plagiarizing, or uh, adapting, adaptive reuse, or modifications. It's not creativity. That is something else. Uh, yeah, it's, it's practice. It's craft, isn't it? It's like, oh, I've learned a few technical things, and I can put these in order, and something I happens. I wouldn't call it craft. I think craft is a very sacred term, art and craft. I think... Uh, uh, within the within an art form, the the ability to craft something, uh, I would still not allow um, for myself, at least within my uh, you know uh, world, I wouldn't want uh, the the term craft to be insulted or diluted, insulted by way of using it for people who have never learned the art form, so therefore they cannot craft anything, um, uh, something unique. So I would still. Uh, sustain or maintain the sanctity of these words. Uh, what people are doing is, uh, I think, some sort of an adaptive reuse and uh, making a, you know, taking a head of somewhere and an eyeball from somewhere. It is a kitchen of sorts. They're creating a kitchen. I don't know what to mumble jumble what to do. Anyway, uh, let's uh, uh, the uh, the reflex uh, dans l'eau, uh, you know, uh, let, us, let us go to France a bit. Hmm. Yeah. And can you well, play? Can you play a piece? Uh, if you, whatever, not just Debussy, but anybody else, uh, we've we've spoken and discussed. Uh, can you? Can you? If you feel like in a mood, if you can play something. Yeah, I mean, uh, with French. So we did do the second cathedral, of course, with Debussy. But I can just to see, just to show maybe how consistent Debussy was. I can try to do something. Uh, like Red Vin on Low, for example, the relax reflections in the water, a little bit of that, it's an excellent piece. And, um
there of the, of the French, I mean, Debussy is considered the first modernist uh, composer, and uh, I think you can see why in, in those kinds of pieces. The thinking kind of moved completely away from tonality, and it was more about these, creating these just sound impressions, um, you know, high and low, it was using the full instrument, um, basically for the entire piece, from a very low register with a bell-like middle register, all the way to these top really delicate notes, um, or sometimes not so delicate, <laughs> and uh, it makes really for, for, for wonderful music, wonderfully imaginative music. And uh, so this was a little bit in contrast, let's say, to some of the other modernists, like, um, like Scriabin, for example. Uh, there's... Um, I've actually not heard him, so if you can... Uh... Uh, share something. Uh, I have I have not uh, uh, yeah, seen can, his work. I can yeah. And so, um, so well, to give a bit of a background, uh, I can try something very short. Unfortunately, I I, I don't uh, know if I remember too much of this piece. Okay. Uh, he was quite crazy uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, so some fun facts. He he. Uh, uh, came up with what's called the mystic chord, what he called the mystic chord. And, and he and basically his pieces are incessant repetitions of this chord in various kind of uh, different, you know, in different, you know, flip this way, flip that way, move up, move down. And uh, all of his music is basically focused on that. And um, so, well, he wrote a, he, he started writing, he didn't finish a piece um, unfortunately, he died before he could finish it, and the uh, name had just slipped my mind, but it was a very interesting concept. He wanted uh, to create, to compose a piece that was for all of the senses. So there would be music composed, and uh, at the same time, there would be a material that you would touch at a certain moment in the piece. There would be a scent that you smelled at a certain time in the piece, and there would be some... Uh, uh, Visualizations. He invented what's called uh, the color, a colorful keyboard, which you play and colors come out. He was known to be to have synesthesia, so that's a mixing of the senses. And so he wanted to write this piece that would be a delight for all of the senses. And uh, but he couldn't finish it. It was to be played uh, in the Himalayas, actually, and he wanted to be performed only once for a select group of people. That was the idea. <laughs> So, just to give a little bit of, let's see if I can remember. Thank you. 
So that was about the first uh, couple of phrases of that. Uh, and so we can see the kind of madness in it, can't we? Uh, with the same thing repeated twice, the second one much more incessantly with this low octave and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what did you think of the first time you heard Sriyavan? Yeah, it's very... I'll, I'll need to listen to him more. It was... Uh, and I, I would... You know, my way of um, uh, looking at uh, work is not to look an, at an excerpt. Uh, I can make out how wonderful and what, what his vision, uh, you know, is, uh, but to, to, I will need to see one full piece, uh, perhaps, you know, the most, uh, the one which has the greatest, if I were to give, be given one piece, it'll have to be the most complex, which has the dynamic range. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to hear him, uh, hear his diverse uh, diversity, uh, witness his diversity to be able to comment on him. So I will reserve my observations uh, in the sense I will I will say it's a work in progress by by gaining, uh, you know, some understanding from his, of his work. But this is very very interesting uh, to see. But I'll have to have, have you know, this is an excerpt that you played that you could recall. Um, uh, but but uh, I, I look forward to listening to him, and then we can continue our conversation about that's that's nearly uh, we've covered quite a bit, couple of centuries of piano in this conversation so oh, far. Yeah. <laughs> You've given me quite a workout. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, it was it's uh, quite interesting. What about uh, uh, how do you now? Let's let's um, you've seen the harmonium. I mean, I. I have seen some solos. I mean, one of the greatest uh, harmonium players that I witnessed is uh, Maharaj Thakur Singh, uh, you know, who not only played with his fingers, he could play with his knuckles. <laughs> he would do one tan here and I would do the same thing with his knuckles. Um, he lived in anonymity for 48 years and before it was uh, time for him to breathe his last. Uh, but but uh, then I have met, of course, I've been in touch with several other mainstream harmonium players which is basically one-handed playing. Uh, can you demonstrate something uh, like you've seen the harmonium with an, you know, its stretch of about three octaves, uh, three and a half octaves. Can you do something which you would do just within that, just to just imagine you have the harmonium and you have your one hand. Let's say first apply just your right hand. Uh, let's see what you do. How would you practice or what you would play and then what you would do with the same left hand if you were to. That would be very, very interesting for me to uh, look at. Yeah, I, can, I mean, in terms of uh, harmonium playing, I mean, there's a lot of harmonium players that uh, only use three fingers, for example. And actually, I remember when I was in India in the 2000, when I was a teenager, and there were some students from the university in Patiala that uh, came to me. They were keyboard uh, players, and they said, well, can you show us some, some exercise or something, something, how do you play? And I said, okay, show me what, what, what you do first so I can, you know, figure out what to tell you. And he came in, and I, I don't know if you can see this, but he, he played a chord like this. With his second and his third and his fourth finger. Hmm. Whereas a piano player would play like this. And so that was completely shocking to me. I was like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> That's not how you play the keyboard. <laughs> can you can you show uh, uh, to the to the to the camera behind you v without your back? Can you just show? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, is this better to see? Yes. Now it is. Yes. So he, he played the, the chord like this. I see. And rather than, of course, playing like this with the hand straight and uh, and all of that, but I think. Harmonium playing is a little bit, because um, the problem with piano playing is that it's not just pushing keys, it's, it's that when the, when the key is pushed in the wrong way, you get the wrong sound. And so, um, for example, a lot of people, when they learn playing piano, they, they don't actually go to the bottom of the key. And when they, so when they play, they're just kind of fluffing the, the, the notes, you know? So that kind of playing would sound, I don't know, something like... Uh, using their fingers, uh, but the piano is actually played with the full weight of your arm from the from the back of your um, 
uh, just under your shoulder blade. So it's all of the weight of your arm is in every note, no matter how fast or soft. So it's just to play the Bach again. And so that, that's one of the things. And so, for example, on the clavichord, that technique isn't used because um, we don't need weight on the clavichord. So. The clavichord and the organs uh, are played in a rather similar way, where instead of using the whole arm and, the, and, the, and a flexible wrist to produce sound like we do on a piano, um, we use our fingers from above the knuckle, so the finger should be stiff, uh, so that it produces a stable sound on the instrument. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but. Um, if I just touch the clavichord, the sound becomes very unstable if I just touch it. But if I have a stiff finger, not only is it louder, but it's, it's a much more stable sound. Right. And so imagine that good harpsichord, uh, sorry, good harmonium playing would have something to do with that kind of playing, a little bit like you would play um, on an organ, um, with a stiff finger from the knuckle to the key. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, uh, exercises. I, I tend to, if I want to practice a certain technique, that I tend to um, take it out of a piece, let's say, that I'm practicing. So I would practice something like, uh, uh, first very slowly. Second one, yeah. Now you can add. We've we've had a demonstration, yeah. So we come so to your practice now, yes. So, so for example, that if I do the same thing, I would that piece. Uh, it's an extract from some, uh, again from some Beethoven, but but you would um, you would do the same thing with both hands first of all. So. <laughs> let's say that segment in particular, well, I would put the metronome on and I would, uh, uh, let's, you know, depending on what I'm practicing, but I try to increase the tempo. Uh, so it starts something like... So a kind of comfortable tempo, and then slowly increase it so that I can get the uh, speed that I want, whatever it may be. In fact, it's a good time to overshoot the speed. Uh, it, that's good instrumental practice, I'm sure you'll agree. And so you, you actually practice it faster than you're going to play in the performance. So that's a little faster, then you can go even faster. And then even faster. And, uh, and, and until you get to the tempo that, uh, and of course you have to keep the comfort level. So, um, repetition, there is one exercise that I found very useful on, on piano that, uh, where you actually, if you have a passage to practice, let's say like, uh, something like that, you would, uh, you play every note twice. So, Now, patterns is 
also a very good way. So we, we, we change the rhythmic patterns quite often. So uh, uh, I don't know, another passage uh, that you have in, uh, something like, for example, well, the same one, let's say, that I was doing, or maybe that Chopin I was playing earlier. So it's quite uh, a good idea, not only to play evenly, but to... Strengthen the the opposite sides of the beat so that your fingers again uh, get the flexibility that you need to play that piece properly. The strength and all of that. Uh, but in, in piano technique, there's all kinds of uh, funny things that you have to practice. Uh, for example, um, it's often in piano playing that you have a chord where one of the sounds is louder than the other. Um, so, for example, uh, 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 or maybe. So there's a very clear melody on the top there, and so you play a chord, let's say, uh, where you have to, if you have to take out the top note, that's probably the most common because the melody is on the top, so... There's uh, five other notes that I'm playing there at the same time. I don't know if you can see that or, or, or hear it. And I can bring out any one of them in any hand um, if I wanted to. So that's the top, in the middle of the right hand, in the bottom of the right hand, and the top of the left hand, and the uh, middle of the left hand. So um, those kinds of things, when you want to practice those kinds of things, uh, for example, you hit a chord and you let go of the notes that you don't want to hold and hold just the one that, you're, that you want to. So if it's the top or if it's the bottom and uh, the middle. So, uh, uh, so Cheslov, uh, uh, that's that's good. Uh, can I maybe make a request here? Uh, if you can, uh, uh, just like for two, three, four, five minutes, if you can just get into a practice routine of yours. So you've shown us, of course, we can go on. Like uh, the purpose is not to it's not a tutorial. I was just to have a small sample, like small, uh, you know, little, 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 uh, you know, examples to have a general idea. But it'll be great. I know it's it's a practice. Even I, when I practice, it's my private space. Uh, but but uh, you know, you, you teach often. Every day you're teaching. Could you could you kindly um, uh, show for the students who, who would be watching this uh, video, this segment especially, just three okay. four five minutes as you feel inspired. Just starting with slow and then uh, faster or the fastest whatever possible at this moment. What you can think of. All right. Um. I'll probably start with a warm up, something like a, maybe a Bach piece or something like that. Thank you. 
that's one that helped me a lot, for example, for strengthening the fourth and the fifth fingers. Uh, but I wouldn't start by playing that immediately. I'd probably do like a uh, uh, decompose it a little. So. something that you practice the entire keyboard uh, are there things that you do to sort of warm your hands and and with speed when you do patterns etc so well i mean with uh, uh, is there something are there some composers who have uh, used something that you guys would just take an excerpt and and um, uh, rock a mile out of that uh, yeah well of course so, so like the chopin etudes for example are a really good one so the, the first see. one uh, is is uh, you know my, one of my professors used to say that a uh, pianist's breakfast should be ten Chopin etudes. I see, <laughs> and that you should sit down in the morning before you have breakfast and just not maybe at, not at concert speed, not at concert level, but just to have it in your fingers. And I think there's something there's something true about that. The first one, for example, is one that I found particularly nasty, and uh, it's it's an extension. It's, for the practice of the extension and the closing of the hand all the way up and down the keyboard. So I, would you like have the nest, I would like I like the nasty one, yeah. Already. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is uh, this is how it looks like. <laughs> in a while, but that's the idea. And so that's a fantastic piece to practice, uh, I think, all of the fingers. Um, the key, of course, is in the wrist movement, so you actually make a movement that goes down the second finger. You're rotating this way up and the other way down. Uh, otherwise, your hand will fall off, uh, you know, if I play halfway through. And um, so that's one, let's say, that we practice a lot uh, by accenting the different notes. So you'll have a and the fifth, but you can also do it on the second. So. That's that's very very uh, kind. Uh, the, uh, do you uh, would you like to play something? Uh, we're coming to nearly three hours of our conversation. Would you like oh, to well, play something uh, that uh, you know, or um, if you're in a mood, or 
Well, I mean, I'm always in the mood, but I don't know if, uh, I, I, I don't know if, uh, have, have we gone over time or? No, no, there's no overtime, nothing called overtime. <laughs> we, we know when to start, we don't know when to end. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, is it possible to move the camera behind you uh, to the left? Uh, it is on a it is on a stand, isn't it? Because I can't see the hands. If you can go behind and uh, just just go to your just take it away to the left. No, just shift it, not to turn, but just to change the position, the base, basically. I would like to be able to see both your hands and less of your back, if possible. Uh, if you can take diagonal, yeah. And little up, if you can do, little up. Yeah. And just, just rotate it to the right a bit. Right. Uh, to the right. Just to, just, uh, sorry, to pan it to the right, not, not rotate it. Yeah. yeah, just try now. Just have a seat and you'll see. You can go, don't come so close. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good. that's fine. That's good. Yeah, that's all. That's all right. Okay. So, yeah, will that be a little better? Let's see. Yeah. How does it look? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, sorry. So, what, what were we saying there before we? Uh, would you like to play something? Play something. Well, sure. I think maybe a uh, maybe a fragment of the maybe the first movement of the thirtieth Beethoven. All right. right. Thank you. 
That was wonderful, and thank you so much for that. And uh, 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 Chesna, uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, of course, um, uh, before we um, wind up today, um, yeah. do you uh, uh, do you have something that we've done, something that I've written, uh, handy, or do you think it's too much to too much to do? <laughs> well, I I I, I, um, I did have a look at some of the things. Unfortunately, I, I didn't have enough time to make it like so presentable. I see. Uh, but I did have some music uh, that I could try if you like. I mean, I have the notes. Uh, I see. You wanna you wanna try something, or do we leave it for another day? <laughs> you might be, uh, put something out of this. Uh, maybe just a fragment. I think this is a uh, interesting enough. Actually, I was thinking about this uh, the, the scale. It's the basant. Okay. And uh, uh, I, I think I understood why it's so difficult for us to hear it. I mean, for us in the in the West, for, for us to understand the melodic kind of structure of it. Mm -hmm. And so, really, just a fragment. Uh, and uh, I'll see if I can get it in some kind of a. I think it sounds really great on the piano, and the finishing patterns are particularly effective. Um, with the, for example, that kind of those kinds of patterns, I think, are really wonderful. Um, uh, or, or, or a little bit later. Uh, I wish I had more. I, I, I um, I'd love to show it, <laughs> but maybe, yeah. That's okay. So, uh, Chester, thank you so much for um, uh, you know, um, you know, joining us today, and um, um, I appreciate that very much. Um, no, it means a lot, and I. Uh, it's been uh, you know. Normally, we we all uh, uh, this this. Uh, um, you know, as I'm, you know, many people want to hear play, play, you know, but then my, my argument is that there's so much of music already, uh, which is there to hear on YouTube, on Spotify, on iTunes, I mean, name it, you know, there's so many platforms, uh, of course, to purchase, to, to buy it, uh, music is available uh, on, on several online things, but the purpose of these conversations is to, um, uh, to be introduced to an artist's or a or a scholar scholar musician's uh, perspective, how do they think about music? How is it that they have uh, been been sort of treading on the path that has that has brought them some content, uh, some respect some respect from from uh, within the fraternity of music and arts, uh, arts and crafts included, you know. Uh, and from from uh, their fans and followers and 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 their colleagues, um, but it, it is not just merely um, you know picking up a notation and you know doing the mechanics of it. Uh, the, 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 there's so much of gradation, so many hues, uh, the range of uh, emotions that can be. Um, uh, you know, filled in a melodic pattern and ca that can be subtracted from melodic pattern. Uh, there's a mountain that you can fill in a, a musical note and there is a, you know, <laughs> an ocean that you can uh, deny, disenfranchise uh, a musical note. Uh, 
so you know it takes a lot of a uh, lot of work i mean i was uh, you know my very dear friend dominique uh, the william ku one of the world's finest cellists uh, whom i'll have the uh, fortune of hosting uh, in this conversation on tuesday next on monday or tuesday i'll uh, i think it's too going to be tuesday um you know i requested him to for example play nearly 250 300 year old cello uh, is one of the most expensive you know living cellos on the planet uh, i remember maybe nearly 25 years ago uh, you know it was purchased for nearly 450000 at that time must be a few million dollars worth now um, the really? i've seen him teach you know i've seen him teach at the conservatory of paris um, it is not just the notation you see like we go it's not just uh, you know somebody takes up my grand uncle rotations written by my grand uncles by tar singh by the charan singh or yani gan singh at tabad or any other any other maestro uh, they just pick up and uh, they they try to uh, render it you know it's just very plateau it's very you know sort of uh, very uh, monotonous uh, heavy at times uh, uh, you know and people who are born on the harmonium the voices are just blaring like the harmonium like the air that blares out of the reeds they're also blaring uh, you know uh, uh, the music out of their own reed you know the vocal cords uh, this the, the the kind of uh, you know where dominique and philip who was the first soloist at the in the uh, you know the uh, paris philharmonic orchestra i'm talking about 18 19 20 years ago when i would frequent uh, paris often and and what them also do what i would be very happy to see that they also have it's not just it's easy to stereotype western music or it's all written music no but there's so much that is not written right there is so much that is carried orally from master to master uh, from one lineage of playing to another like if you have one maestro in a conservatory it would be people would be learning bach in a, you know with a certain color tone and tenor uh the same uh, box uh, you know uh, suit would be um you know uh, taught by another maestro let's say uh, you know pablo casals would have a different to rostropovich's uh, handling now you find uh, dominic duvilinko playing something um you know so beautifully uh, not different but so beautifully uh, sort of uh, maybe an alternate <laughs> alternative versus a yo yo ma playing handling a similar or the same uh, same so not in, the, in in these times right so people it can be very misleading the idea of notation whether whether a composition is carried uh, you know orally or written but there's so much that just cannot be written um, and so it's, it's very important for me to uh, you know it it requires patience also on the part of the listeners the kinds of listeners who would just be wanting something like a quick job you know like a fast food like a drive through that they just want to tune in and they just want music okay i want to hear music if there's a conversation i'm not interested but then they are missing out that's exactly what they're missing out when they are even listeners of music they do, just don't get it that uh, they, they are not introduced to the idea of discourse that music itself is a discourse music is mm. not an item it's not a commodity uh, it is it is not just an art piece uh every single piece is a codification uh of 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 someone's life even if mozart has created several you know several uh you know pieces of bach has created but they are fully present the author of a piece is fully present living in a in a single piece uh, as mm-hmm. i often uh, uh i Uh, pardon me by uh, if i'm taking uh, maybe if i add another example if you want to be introduced let's say to to guru ramdas uh, you don't need to look at everything that he wrote or all the compositions originals of his that uh, that have survived look at this comp- my voice is dead right now i'm not sleeping enough uh, you know uh, but but look at um, you know uh, this composition ah uh, ag ag ma sane va ma ma a re ag ma bhaja ram ma ram i mean 
This is a masterpiece. You can have a darshan, a didar of Guru Ram Das in this. How he has touched the notes. Why he is using a melodic mode. Why he is saying what he is saying to the mind using the words that he has used. That which is trying to fill in. That which is trying to emphasize. Emphasis is on the musical note. Emphasis on the tal. Emphasis is on the meaning. It's, it's mind-boggling. Look at this, the way he builds. It's a conversation with the mind. He's not interested in conversing with anybody else in this composition. He's trying to cajole, cajole the mind. He's trying to convince. He's trying to argue with the mind, pushing the mind, convincing the mind into an act. He wants the mind to do something. See the, the Gandhar, the third flat, the swagging, the, the uh, very, very swinging, uh, the, the, the third. You know, he's convinced, he's conversing. Negotiating with the mind. Descriptive. That's a very tough sell to sell. He is engaged in, you know, contemplation or meditation or uh, repetition or, or uh, you know, of, of the one who has, well, the one who has Rubuna, no form, the one with no form, Rek, no form, no lines, no color. It's a very tough sell to make to the mind, but he's trying to make it. When the verdict is already given that the mind is not going to listen, but yet he's making an effort and he succeeds in the end. <laughs> Sell. He's marketing now. <laughs> What happens to those who have sung? It's almost as if the mind is the doorman. He's not letting the song of the karta, of the creator, the songs of virtues that will that will ornate you with all the virtues that, that, that there are, the song that will eradicate or just push away, throw away, uh, you know, uh, run down all the vices that exist within you. That as if the mind has become the doorman, adamant, not letting that song, the song that 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 brings in the storm of knowledge, of awakening with it. And Guru Ram Das is conversing with it. That's a paradox. That's a parable. That's the plot. And then he's... Um, The plot is Service Three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. It just changes. Karta sab tu, 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 ram, ram. Now this is conversing, uh, conversing with the, with the karta, with the doer. So first he's talking to the mind, bhajaramo man, ram. Just rupna rekh bhadam. Sat sangat mil bhajar. You know, uh, ram, har ho 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 kirpan. Uh, so bhajaramo man, ram, just rupna rekh bhadam. Jis rupna rekh vadaam 
जित ग्रह गुण गावते हरि के जित ग्रह मंदिर हरि होत जास तित घर आनंदो आनंद भज राम 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 so he is convincing of the mind telling the benefits but then subsist dhar prabhu tu kripa karta tu 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 ram ram jan nan ko sarnagati deho gurmati bhaj ram 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 i mean look at the gamut man from talking to the mind selling to the mind then the coming to the knowledge and then the conversation with the doer itself with the creator of the cosmos the whole idea of life that's guru ramdas this composition and it's you don't need the need the rest of it we forget the, the, the with the we, we are so spoiled just look that we forget that guru nanak when guru nanak lived he had no idea he did not read guru gobind singh He did not read what his ninth in line, ninth Nanak would do. He was not versed with the, um, you know. Yes, we can say he could see the future, could see the past. That's a romantic idea. Maybe he could. But let's, for a moment, go back. Let's be, let's be brutally, you know, human. The one we don't know future. You can project. You can say, well, here I'm placing an idea. I'm placing the idea of virtues when they are. you know clad here is the idea of vices that they are when they are all shed right and then maybe you will have someone who sees uh, the uh, the the uh, the vices and the virtues the sorrows and the joys of saints samta with with oneness but there's no altar there's no duality there's no animosity there's no good no bad well then you have someone like guru angad the second nanak with that right is an idea had he so uh, you know convinced that that the moment of the method the, the way he has set the theorems that it is possible to live to that idea that vision and that is where you find the sacrifices uh, uh, the ones like guru gobind made you see the martyrdoms of the younger sahib zadas uh, you see baba banda singh bahadur his five year old son we accepts to have his heart ripped out and they say well we'll forgive you we'll you know if you change your faith and you renounce your dad's all this mumbo jumbo you know you 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 uh, you know sort of you you defect and we'll give a five year old he says oh well you want to give him the heart well i got the heart from him what better uh, for me to 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 know that it will be my father who will actually eat my heart and his heart was ripped out near the kutub minar the so called very famous monument that's where banda singh bahadur was martyred and so many of the sikhs were martyred and they accepted that where do you see it is in the vision of nanak it is in the vision of uh, uh, bhagat kabir for example who says sura so pehchani hai jo lare din ka hai purja purja kati mare kabhu na chhade khet you know what is it to it's the song of these people and these kabir for example was not versed even the compositions of guru ramdas guru angad point i'm making is to come back now uh, pardon me for this longish uh, um, you know build up that a single composer is con- is is present in a single song you do not need to see 50 songs of a person maybe that person only composed one at the you know just when he was he or she was awakened you can see the journey the entire lifetime of this the entire understanding of those words and that just cannot be written you can write a few lines and uh, for me it is very it was very important to have you uh, uh, it is like a crash course for me you know i have heard so much of piano i have my favorites uh, i'm not going to name them because i don't want to stereotype them and disenfranchise others that i have not perhaps heard or not perhaps learned to appreciate but i've had some listening right i've had some very good friends who are uh, you know dave frank is one of them who is an outstanding pianist we were so fortunate to have him join us uh, you know and uh, juliana sorsha of course and then uh, you know uh, jussi caruso even in the series in this badak series but then i know so many others uh, you know who it would not it the zama recluses who would not uh, 
who don't keep skypes and don't keep social medias and others i know so many but it's impossible to get them here unless i go to them they, they would i know that they will allow me to record and uh, share it with people but in this way virtually to go live it's not possible but you know for me it was very important to learn about what is it, the differences uh, how um, how much it takes to play a piece uh, is, is the reason why I thought it's important to have this conversation. And I'm so grateful that you could join and, and all your friends, you know, from, uh, from the Piano House and uh, uh, your other friends, uh, Zail, uh, what's the name? Zilia, yeah. yeah. Yes, the, the, thank you all of you really for, I know there were technical issues, but uh, uh, it happens. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but uh, that's how life is, and this is the idea of lockdown. You're lucky that you have a little less lockdown. You are you have people at home. Uh, you know they can come without the masks and so on and so forth. So that's good news. That's good to see. I went out to. Uh, I'm yet to have breakfast even, but uh, I brought uh, just before we started. I ran to you know ops to get some. Uh, I'm going to be a vegan meal for me today. Uh, after 57 days, <laughs> I went to them. So the point I'm making is, uh, finally we get to see some people. I took some videos as well. So it's good to see some movement, good to see life, uh, you know, men out of their holes. Uh, <laughs> and that, <laughs> and that uh, you know, you could join us. My greetings to everyone that, that helped you uh, join us today. And um, uh, my apologies to all our listeners because of the technical issues and difficulties that we had. But thank, I thank them so, you know, uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, that they could join us today. Um, thank you again. Chess love. Satkata. Well, we'll be we'll to talk to you shortly. Yes. Bye-bye. Uh, you want to say something to people before? I'm, I'm sorry. I should have asked you to say, yeah, to respond even. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was just saying that uh, I, I just want to thank you for, for having me and and uh, just being considered with some of the other names on the same place. Can you, can you maybe can you maybe speak into the other camera because oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know the, the microphone is that that you're using. I'll so, I'll um, sort of. Oops. I was I'll, saying. Is this, uh, is this yeah. better? Yeah. Uh, no, you're now closer to the microphone. Yes. Although so it's yeah. crazy, but uh, but at least I was you're just saying that even being considered on the same list as some of the other names and. And being able to speak with you about, you know, something that I, uh, I like so much. And it was really an honor just to be considered, like I said. And so thank you very much for this. And, and uh, it's um, very moving also for me uh, on how many levels that uh, these things can, we can connect uh, with each other. And I mean the music's also particularly. And, and uh, that's really lovely. So, um, yeah. And uh, absolutely, and, and as, a, as a fun fact, actually, about the instrument, you were speaking about instruments, this particular instrument, it's a Steinway concert grant, we can't see it uh, really on the cameras, but um, it was a philharmonic instrument, and it was actually played, it was actually touched by some of the great 20th century pianists in concert. For example, Arthur it? Rubinstein. Arthur Rubinstein played on this piano, I believe it was in... Uh, 67. Wow. Uh, in Poland. Uh, uh, also, Emil Gilels played on this piano, and uh, Witold Mauczyński, who is the third winner of the, uh, uh, sorry, the th third place of the third piano, uh, Chopin piano competition in 1937. He, uh, fantastic pianist. And what you were saying about uh, how so much things can't, so many things can't be written, uh, Mauczyński is known to be. Uh, to have been, rather, one of those pianists that kept the old way of praising Chopin alive. And so it's absolutely right. It's absolutely true. Nothing, not everything can be written. And uh, and you have to listen to Vital Mautrzyzewski, otherwise there's no other way of getting those original Chopin phrasings. And, I see. and uh, so, absolutely. And and again, thank you very much and, and for having this, and, and, and really an honor. Oh, no. My pleasure, really. And uh, not a uh, not the best of the visual experiences, I must say, because of uh, you know we've set a record. I'm I'm getting requests from so many filmmakers who want to emulate the the, the production that is going on. 
Uh, but today, I think uh, I, I was joking with uh, one of your new fans, uh, Navneet Chahal. I was teasing her that uh, because she was, they were all been, uh, you know, bravoing my production so much that all the evil eyes have combined today to to, to play, to wreak havoc on my production in a way. The audio was all over the place. Well, I wasn't responsible for that. The video, uh, the lighting, etc., etc., were all over the place. But anyway, we uh, that's the, uh, the idea of joining at a time when we are all literally still under sort of uh, conditional lockdown now. It is no longer a 100% lockdown. But, uh, you know, we're still sort of coming to grips with the idea of getting out now. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. All right. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I take your leave now. And uh, best wishes to everyone in Poznan. All our friends. I've met, uh, you know, your colleagues at Our Place Foundation. And, uh, yeah. and your, my, you know, your friend who was very kind in hosting me in his studio up there, you know, do my, offer my greetings to them as well. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bye -bye. So, dosto, uh, this is uh, my uh, conversation. My little Varta si aaj Chaslav Bala Singh hona It was, uh, uh, before I go to Punjabi, I'll just, uh, why now, uh, you know, uh, let me, let me say a few things. Still in English. So it was it was really a pleasure. I don't need to now, uh, link, you know, sort of continue with that. But let me go straight to tomorrow's event. Uh, it is uh, oh my, you know, it is a it is with an app, you know, it will be an honor and a pleasure really uh, to have uh, like I, uh, I had a tradition. Here is another head of another tradition from the Delhi Gharana, Ustad Nasiruddin uh, Sami uh, will be joining live from Karachi. Uh, which is tomorrow. This is, uh, you know, I have, uh, it is my absolute pleasure to share this with you. And uh, we've already had some of the stalwarts of Sufi music and, uh, you know, Karnatak Sangeet. Uh, and he is, he is a, uh, you know, as uh, I've learned, he's a scholar, he knows Sanskrit, he is a, an outstanding Urdu speaker, uh, versed with the old, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the South Asian concepts of aesthetics and art, the way they are written down and old scriptures and so on and so forth. It's very, very academic, academically uh, very sound. Academic, not in the Western sense, in the Indic sense or the, the South Asiatic sense. Uh, he, is, he is one fine fellow. Uh, he is one informed fellow and he's a one learned, learned uh, elder who, who we are fortunate to have in our, in our midst. Uh, so it will be my pleasure to be in conversation with Ustad Nasiruddin Sami. I hope you will all mark your uh, uh, calendars. Uh, as uh, it is the Mubarak uh, month of Ramazan, uh, Ramadan, uh, tomorrow at, again at 7, uh, Ustad Nasiruddin Sami and his entire family and students in Karachi, all those who are able to uh, access him in spite of the lockdown, they will be, of course, uh, ending their fast at about 7. And uh, he will join us at 8 p.m. Uh, Pakistan time, which will be 8.30 uh, India time and 5 p.m. Uh, Italy time. And, of course, 11 a.m. New York and the rest you can calculate. Uh, so I hope that uh, you will be able to uh, join as uh, the next days are also uh, confirmed, I can uh, share with you one other beautiful, beautiful, beautiful news that a very dear, dear, dear friend, uh, if I may, uh, is Parvati Baul. Uh, she will be joining us at uh, the normal time, uh, 4 p.m. Italy and 7.30 p.m. India, uh, this Saturday on 9th uh, May uh, 2020. And we will go to Bengal and she'll be joining us live from uh, the ashram, uh, you know, in West Bengal. Uh, wouldn't that be fantastic? So you can mark your date. Tomorrow it will be at 5 p.m. Italy time and 8.30 India time and 8 o'clock in Karachi or in Pakistan. Um, uh, all places in uh, Pakistan. And But the after tomorrow we'll be back to the 4 p.m., uh, you, know, um, um, you know, time. And, um, uh, and one more beautiful, beautiful, beautiful news is that uh, one of, uh, um, I mean, he is the greatest, in fact, uh, one of the greatest icons of contemporary India, 
uh, is uh, a Padma Shri awardee, Prahlad Tipania. Uh, he is the head of the Kabir Panth and uh, it'll be, I don't know, it is, uh, he heads that parampara, I serve um, the Nanaki traditions. Uh, our families and our traditions go way back centuries and I'll be in conversation with him this Sunday, uh, which is May 10th. Um, and he'll be joining from his village, um, you know, which is in Ujjain uh, district in Madhya Pradesh. Um, and it'll be just fantastic. I mean, he is, he is one beautiful soul, uh, so learned in the Kabiri way. He has that sense of humor. He has that courage. He can call spade a spade. Um, and, you know, believe you me, uh, you want to mark your dates and time and, and make sure you have your popcorns and your whatever you drink along with it ready. Um, uh, you know, you should, you should tune in, uh, make plan, make, make, your, make your time uh, and, and beforehand do all your errands. And these three evenings will be a sort of uh, worth, worth uh, looking forward to. Um, I will now uh, thank you uh, to all the English uh, speakers. Uh, and I'll now switch to some Punjabi. Uh, so, dosto, badi manu pada 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 badi khushi hai manu ke jo aaj Chaslav Bala Singh the naal jo si vartha ki thi jab main aage ars kar raha tha ke ye jury nahi hunda dekhna ke sirf piece sun liya ko sangit sun liya par wo the pichhe dushti koun kiya? Baat sangit pya to aaj vade vade madhyam jee am YouTube the bada kuch pya hai. So, this virtual battle series is a very sell. If you have a lot of people who are in the world, you can see that the people who are in the world are in the world. You can see that the people who are in the world are in the world. You can see that the people who Zubani loon on jeevi laga rinda swadli hundi ya par mehnat hundi ya jadi aluni sil ya ne ke bagayar loon de o sil jadi chatni bhi pade pawe te o da swad bhi na ave so e jadi ya conversations ne na e o na damaga lai ya o na jigriya lai ya jena sabar hai jena santok hai jade jeevan di kitab padan de adi bhi han ke ya jade shonk rakh de ne ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਬੁਖਾਰ ਜਿਹਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਫਲਰਟੇਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਜੀ ਇੰਗੇਜਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ 뮤직 ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ ਔਰ ਸੀਜ਼ਨਲ ਫਲਰਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਮੌਸਮੀ ਮਾੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਚਲੋ ਐਂਟਰਟੇਨ ਕਰ ਲਿਆ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬੈਠਕਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਹੈਗੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਰਸ ਪਾਇਆ ਜੀਵਨ ਚੋਂ ਜਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਚਾਹਵਾਨ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਜੀਵਨ ਦੇ ਜੋ ਰਸ ਲੈ ਸਕੀਏ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ uh, attendee banna chaunde ne jeevan de vich jehde acche patrons banna chaunde ne acche vidwan bhave tusi kal nu doctor hi banna par je tusi eh vartaavan inna vade vade jehde sangeetagya han ge kavi han ge jeve kal assi mariya gracia kalandro ne to assi kavita vi suni oh kive deal kar rahe ne ek bridge giriya genoa da ohde utte unna ne kavita likhi oh dharti da dharti da balatkar hunda dekh rahe ne us nu kaavbad kive kita उस तरह संगीतकार के में है मैं हूं अगले दिन आदे विच मैं जड़े चित्रकार हन के वड़े वड़े चित्रकार जड़े नामवर हन के जिमें मंजीत सिंग चात्रक बैठे ने कैनेडा विच सिधार थोनी बैठे ने ग्रेटर नोएडा विच सिधार साहब प्रेम सिंग होनी बैठे ने अर्पणा कौर हन के इना नाल भी आपा गुफ्तगू कर रही इना तो भी आपा सुनना है आपा कवि आपा कहानीकारा दे नाल गल करनी है मैं विनती करांगा डॉक्टर मदन गोपाल सिंह नु ਕਿ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਮਰਹੂਮ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਹਰਪਾਜਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੋਣਾ ਦੀਆਂ ਕਵਤਾਵਾਂ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਤਰਜਮਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸੁਣਾਉਣ ਇਹ ਬੜਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੁਝ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ ਸੀ ਪਾਇਲਟ ਹੀ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਨਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਝਾੜੂ ਹੀ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਲਾਣਾ ਸਿੱਖਣਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਜਾਂ ਨਰਸ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਨਾ ਇੰਜੀਨੀਅਰ ਹੀ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਨਾ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਵਾਰਤਾਵਾਂ ਹਨ ਗਿਆ ਇਹ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ ਨਾਗਰਿਕ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਗਿਆ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਹੱਥ ਵਿੱਚ ਚੰਗੀ ਹਿਫਾਜ਼ਤ ਮਾਣ ਸਕੇਗੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਹੱਥ ਕਾਬਿਲ ਹੋ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ ਉਹਦੇ ਅਟੈਂਡੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਰਾਖੇ ਬਣ ਜਾਓਗੇ ਇਹ ਮੰਤਵ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਨੁਮਾਇਸ਼ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਖਣੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੈਟ ਵਾਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਆਮ ਨਾਟ ਇਨਵਾਈਟਿੰਗ ਆਲ ਥੀਸ ਯੂ نو ਫੈਂਟਾਸਟਿਕ ਆਰਟਿਸਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਮਾਈਸਟਰੋਸ ਐਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਸ਼ਨਰਸ ਆਫ ਵੇਰੀਅਸ ਆਰਟ ਫਾਰਮਸ ਟੂ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਅ ਕੈਟ ਵਾਕ ਇਨ ਫਰੰਟ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਗਟ ਪਲੈਂਟੀ ਆਫ ਅਦਰ ਐਵੇਨਿਊਸ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੀ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਕੈ
it is about their perspective about their understanding about their sensitivity sensibility let me at the at the, at the cost of repeating myself so eh tonu main dass reha ke oh kive dekhde ne oh di mainu mash kar reha kive oh takde ne kive oh chakde ne you know is this jeevan jo ohna nu amrit rupi jo ohna nu pyala banaunda hai bhave dukh da hai bhave sukh da oh kive chakde ne kive oh bayan karde ne apne dil di kive oh watchde ne ਧਰਤੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਚੰਗਾ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਮਾੜਾ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਬਿਆਨ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਜ਼ੁਬਾਨੀ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਰੰਗਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਢੰਗਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਸੁਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਵਜਾ ਕੇ ਜਾਂ ਗਾ ਕੇ ਜਾਂ ਗੁਮਨਾਮੀ ਨਾਲ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਮੌਨ ਨੇ ਜੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਜ਼ੁਬਾਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਇਜ਼ਹਾਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਅਕਥ ਹੈ ਵੈਸੇ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਕਥ ਕੇ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਥ ਪਾਉਂਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੇਰਾ ਮਨ ਮੇਰੀ ਮੇਰੀ ਰੀਜ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਰੀਜ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਤੇ ਇਲਜ਼ਾਮ ਲਾਉਣਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਇਹ ਮੇਰਾ ਇਲਜ਼ਾਮ ਬਣਦਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਤੇ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਆ ਯਤਨ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦਾ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਮਸ਼ਕਤ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਕੁਝ ਦੇਖ ਸਕੋ ਸੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜੁੜਦੇ ਹੋ ਮੈਂ ਬੜਾ ਸ਼ੁਕਰਗੁਜ਼ਾਰ ਹਾਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਸਬਰ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਹੋਰਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਾਲੇ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹਿ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਘੱਟ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਈ ਹੋਰ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਮਾਂ ਵੀ ਲੇਟ ਹੋਇਆ ਖਾਣਾ ਵੀ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਉਹ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕੱਲ ਵੀ ਆਉਂਦੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਆਉਂਦੀਆਂ ਕੱਲ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ 'ਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬਹਿ ਕੇ ਵੀ ਦੇਖੋਗੇ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅੱਜ ਜੁੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹੀ ਸਿਆਣੇ ਹੰਗੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਈ ਬਹੁਤ ਆਸਟ੍ਰੇਲੀਆ 'ਚ ਬੈਠੇ ਨੇ ਫਾਰ ਈਸਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸਮਾਂ ਤਿੰਨ ਤਿੰਨ ਚਾਰ ਚਾਰ ਸਵੇਰ ਦੇ ਵਜੇ ਹੋਣੇ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਹੀ ਸੁਣਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੱਲਾ ਸੁਣਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਵੀ ਸੁਣਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਪਰ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸੰਗੀਤਕਾਰ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਚਿੱਤਰਕਾਰ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਵੀਸ਼ਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹਨਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਵਿਤਰੀ ਕਵੀ ਕਵਤਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਲਿਖਦੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਅੱਖਰ ਉਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਕਾਵ ਹੋਣ ਕਾਵ ਕਾਵ ਨੁਮਾ ਹੋਣ ਜਾਂ ਵੈਸੇ ਹੀ ਕਹਾਣੀ ਨੁਮਾ ਹੋਣ ਜਾਂ ਵਰਨਨ ਅਖਰੀ ਵਰਨਨ ਹੋਵੇ ਯਾ ਮ੍ਰਿਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋਣ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਾਂ ਜੁੜਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੱਪਸ਼ਪ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਕੁਝ ਸਮਝਣਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਉਲਝਣਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਸ ਉਲਝਣ ਜੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੁਝ ਸੁਲਝ ਸਕੀਏ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਇੰਨੀ ਵਾਰਤਾ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਚ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਾਂ ਬੋਲੀ ਚ ਮੈਂ ਦੱਸ ਦਿਆਂ ਕਿ ਕੱਲ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਮਾਣ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਲਈ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਘਰਾਣੇ ਦੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਮੈਂ ਪਰੰਪਰਾ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਦਾ ਮੁਖੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਪਰੰਪਰਾ ਦੇ ਮੁਖੀ ਨੇ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗ ਹਨ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਦਰਮਿਆਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸ਼ੋਭਿਤ ਨੇ ਹੱਲੇ ਵੀ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਾਣ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਦਰਮਿਆਨ ਹਨਗੇ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਨਸੀਦੂਦੀਨ ਸਾਮੀ ਤੋਂ ਮੇਰਾ ਭਾਵ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਕੱਲ ਨੂੰ 8 ਵਜੇ ਕਰਾਚੀ ਦੇ ਟਾਈਮ ਹੈ ਨੇ 8:30 ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਇੱਥੇ 5 ਵਜੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਰੋਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਮੈਂ ਫਸਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੇ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂ ਈਸਟ ਕੋਸਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਟੋਰਾਂਟੋ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਇਸ ਕੋਸ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਆਦ ਵਾਸ਼ਿੰਗਟਨ ਡੀਸੀ ਉਹ 11 ਵਜੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਵੈਸਟ ਕੋਸ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਵੈਂਕੂਵਰ ਸਿਆਟਲ ਜਾਂ ਸੈਨ ਫ੍ਰਾਂਸਿਸਕੋ ਐਲੇ ਲਾਲੋ ਉੱਥੇ ਸਵੇਰ ਦੇ 8 ਵਜੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕੱਢਣਾ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਘੰਟਾ ਲੇਟੈਸਟ ਕਰਕੇ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ
ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਚ ਚੌਥ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਐਤਵਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਮਈ 10 ਸੇਮ 4 ਵਜੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਮਾਨਨੀਯ ਪਦਮ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਵਾਰਡੀ ਪ੍ਰਹਿਲਾਦ ਤਿਪਾਨੀਆ ਹੋਣੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਬੀਰ ਪੰਥ ਦੇ ਮੁਖੀ ਵੀ ਹਨਗੇ ਔਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤ ਰੂਹ ਹਨਗੇ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਹੀ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤ ਰੂਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਇਹ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਹੀਏ ਕਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮਾਰਗ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਬਾਣੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਗਹਿਰੇ ਚਿੰਤਕ ਹਨਗੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਗਾਇਕ ਹਨਗੇ ਔਰ ਵਿਚਾਰਕ ਹਨਗੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਾਂ ਐਤਵਾਰ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੋਣਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੀ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੈਂ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਫੇਸਬੁੱਕ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਵਾਚ ਪਾਰਟੀਜ਼ ਬਣਾਓ ਔਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਹੀਏ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਹੀਏ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰੋ ਵੱਧ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਲਾਈਕ ਕਰਨਾ ਇੱਕ ਚੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਪਰ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਬੜਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਇਹ ਥੋੜੇ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਆਪਣੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੀਅਲ ਐਸਟੇਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਈਬਰ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਪੋਸਟਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਮੈਂ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਬੋਰ ਨਾ ਹੋ ਜਾਓ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਨੇ ਤਬਾ ਦੇਖੀ ਇਹ ਵਾਰਤਾਵਾਂ ਹਨਗੀਆਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਟੱਡੀਜ਼ ਹੋਣਗੀਆਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਕਈ ਕਈ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਦੱਸ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਸੁਣਨ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਣਾਉਣ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੌਕਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਮਿਲਦਾ ਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸੁਣਨ ਦਾ ਲਿਹਾਜ਼ਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਐਸਾ ਸਬਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਦਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਕਰਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਲਾਈਕ ਵੀ ਕਰਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਕਮੈਂਟ ਕਰਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਇਹ ਬੜਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਔਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਪੇਜਸ ਹਨ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਨੋਟੀਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਚਿਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਦਾ ਅਕਸਰ ਮੈਂ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਹੋਰ ਕੋਈ ਉਟ ਪਟਾਂਗ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਸ਼ੂਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੇ ਮੈਸੇਜਸ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਕਰਦਾ ਨਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਟਾਈਮਲਾਈਨ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਹਰ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦਾ ਉਥੇ ਪਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਯਾਨੀ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਕਾਰਜਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਜੋ ਮੈਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਟਾਈਮਲਾਈਨ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਥੇ ਕੋਈ ਨੁਮਾਇਸ਼ ਹੋਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਮੋਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੋਵੇ ਕਿ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਨੋਟੀਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਾਰਜ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਾਬਤ ਹੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਸਦਾ ਵੀ ਦਿੰਨਾ ਅਨਾਦ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜੋ ਯਾਰ ਅਨਾਦ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਬਣੋ ਔਰ ਆਪਣੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਤਨ ਮਨ ਤਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰੋ ਜੁੜੋ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੂਖਮ ਤੇ ਸਥੂਲ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਸੂਖਮ ਅਬੋਧ ਤੇ ਸਥੂਲ ਵਿਰਸਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਭਾਲ ਕਰੀਏ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਕਰੀਏ ਨੁਮਾਇਸ਼ੀ ਖਿਲਵਾੜ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਮਜ਼ਾਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੋਇਆ ਗਲੋਰੀਫਾਈਡ ਰਿਪੇਅਰ ਵਰਕ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਜਾਂ ਉਹੀ ਮਾੜਾ ਮੋਟਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਰਿਕਾਰਡਿੰਗ ਆ ਚਾਰ ਇਕੱਠੀਆਂ ਕਰਦੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੜਾ ਜੀ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੜੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਸੇਵਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰਨੇ ਪੈਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਪੜ੍ਹਨੀਆਂ ਪੈਂਦੀਆਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਬਕੌਲ ਮੇਰੇ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਭਾਈ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਉਸਤਾਦ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਅੰਕਲ ਸਨ ਭਾਈ ਅਰਜਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਤਰੰਗੜ ਹੁਣੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਬੜਾ ਬਰਖੁਦਾਰ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਬਣਨ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੌਂਕ ਹੈ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਸਿੱਖਣੀਆਂ ਸਿੱਖੋ ਪੜ੍ਹਨੀਆਂ ਸਿੱਖੋ ਤੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਪੜ੍ਹੇ ਬਿਨਾ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਲਿਖ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਬੜਾ ਹੀ ਕੰਮ ਲਿਖਣ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਾ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਲਿਖੋ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵਿਅੰਗ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਹਿੰਗਾ ਹੈ ਕਿਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸੁਣੇਗਾ ਕਈ ਜਣੇ ਉਸ ਮੇਰੇ